You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. He did the mash! Ha <laughs> ha, he did the monster mash! The monster mash! It was a graveyard smash! He did the mash! <laughs> It caught on in a flash. The monster mash! Yeah, yeah, he did the monster mash. <laughs> uh, we saved the best one for last, obviously. <laughs> it's not even last. Yeah, we did. We saved a good one, though. That was the monster mash, because today we are breaking down Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, all of the new commanders, including the monster mashing you can do in this set. You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. And boy, oh boy, do we got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, Josh. we've never done uh set reviews back to back to back to back to back before but c20 we're done talking about that for a little while we're now talking about ikoria layer of behemoths the main set and this episode is going to be just the new legendary creatures from that standard legal set now it's even a little more complicated than that because we have the normal legendary creatures and then all the companions yeah. which are also legendary creatures so there's a lot to talk about we're going to go in depth breaking them all down Showing you the smoothest synergies, the most interesting interactions, and the coolest combos. And the mashups. But before we get into all that, we got to talk about our sponsors. If you go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone, that is the place to go to order all of your Ikoria layer of behemoth stuff, all your mm -hmm. commander Ikoria C20 stuff, mm -hmm. any magic cards at all that you want to get your hands on, cardkingdom.com slash command zone is the place to order it. Not only do you get your cards as fast as humanly possible, but also you're supporting all of our content here at the command zone, game nights, everything we do. And of course, with the current world events, make sure you pay, to their, pay attention to their website and Twitter to find out when things are going to be running back to business. Speaking of businesses that we love, Ultra Pro, also sponsor of this show. When we buy our sweet cards and we're mashing them together and we're slamming cards on top of the other ones, we need to make sure they're protected so we don't ding our stuff up. So that's why we trust Ultra Pro here at the Command Zone. Josh and I have all of our decks in their Eclipse sleeves. They make the play mats, the deck boxes to make sure that you have, again, the smoothest experience when playing. So if you're out there supporting a product, please make it be Ultra Pro and support your own products at the same time. And the final way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone. You get to hang out with Jimmy and I on our Discord server. Mm -hmm. You get to watch game nights before anybody else. Lots of perks, lots of cool stuff. We appreciate everybody that supports us that way. And we also shout out one lucky patron every single episode. And this episode is dedicated to Philip McCrellis. Philip you definitely rock. You definitely rock. All right, you got a two-hour episode ahead of you, Philip. so thank you for uh, supporting us on Patreon. Okay, let's get into it. There's no time to waste here. Ikoria Lair Behemoth's brand new set is out, and of course, there are a lot of legendary creatures to go along with it. Now, we did an entire video on the new mechanics of this set because there was too much to just cover in a set review. If you want to watch that, in fact, you should watch that because mutate, ability counters, companion, tons of things to discuss, a lot of intricacies, make sure you watch that video. It's on our channel. And of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our content because there's so much to cover this time around. Yeah, I think it's important to have at least a decent understanding of mutate and companion uh to really be able to put into context you know how a lot of these commanders work so yeah check check out that video if you can we're not going to go over the mechanics much here all right we're going to start with the not with the legends from aquaria layer of behemoths that are not companions we'll go through all of those and then we'll go through the companions uh one note there is a godzilla kaiju <laughs> theme to this set this is the first time they've ever done something like that so a bunch of the cards we haven't talked about this on the show before yet have we so a bunch of the cards have a godzilla world counterpart alt art versions that you can get now i'm unclear on exactly where you get all the versions there's a buy box promo there's showcase cards there's theme boosters and all kinds of different boosters um but you can i know get a godzilla themed version of certain cards or a mothra themed version of a card or and it a will say godzilla up top but it's actually another card that, that's in the set right so just to take it as an example there's a, a card called um hold on let me find it called yadaro which is also a godzilla those cards are technically the same card so you can't have yadaro as your commander and also have the godzilla, godzilla version, version of yadaro with the same text in in your deck yeah. it's one or the other they're the same card just alternate version okay getting that out of the way let's start off with brokos 
Apex of Forever. Is this card broken, Jimmy? It is Brokosin. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty powerful. Two blue, green, and black for a Beast Elemental 6-6. Six, six. It's got Mutate on it for two, a hybrid blue-black, and then green-green. And if you cast a spell for its Mutate cost, you put it over or under target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on top, plus all of the abilities under it. Brokos himself has Trample, and you may cast Brokos from your graveyard using its Mutate ability. So it's a... S- it's a 6-6 six, six with Trample that you can cast from your graveyard for Mutate only. Yes, which is pretty good, which means it, once it goes to the graveyard, you can recast it over and over again without having to pay commander tax should you decide this is your commander. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's um, five mana to mutate. Yeah, and there's a lot of good things that happen to this creature because it becomes a massive 6-6 six, six with Trampler. You're going to want to put it on creatures that, well, are hard to get rid of uh, or creatures that are hard to block. Uh, I like this one. Did you put this on here? Elusive Tormentor? Uh, I didn't. You must have put this I, on here. I did, actually. I, I did. <laughs> I remember. So, I totally remember doing that. Elusive Tormentor is a card that can work in the 99 with Brokos as well because yep. it's a 4-4 four, four for two black black that you can pay one to discard a card, which is really important because you want Brokos in your graveyard, and then you can transform Elusive Tormentor, and it becomes a creature elemental with zero one that's hexproof and indestructible, and it can't block and can't be blocked, and you can transform it back if you want. This is a great target for Brokos to mutate onto. If you have Brokos in your hand, you can put it into your graveyard with this card. Hexproof, indestructible, 6-6 six, six, Trampler, pretty powerful. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. Yep. Uh, this next one is right up Craig's alley. It's uh, one green mana for a 1 1 elf warrior. It's Glistener Elf, so it also has Infect, which means that you play this on one and then you mutate onto it with Brokos at some point later, and it's a 6 6 trample infect. Yeah. Very, very scary. Yeah, and there aren't that many infect creatures that are non humans, so yeah. Glistener Elf is one of them. Uh, you want to protect Brokos? Sure, why not? It's a massive card, it's going to hurt people. Reassembling Skeleton. Great for a lot of reasons. It's one in the black for a 1-1. One, one. You can pay one in the black to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So the thing with Mutate is you need to have targets to always target yeah. with your Mutate. Reassembling Skeleton can always bring itself back to the graveyard for a really cheap cost, and then you can Mutate back onto it with Brokos that next turn. Yeah, that doesn't protect Brokos. That gives Brokos yeah. always having a target for Always mutates. having a target, that's what I meant. Yeah, because yeah, I think that's going to be the problem with Brokos. You can always cast it, but you need something to put it on. Yep. Because uh, you can't just cast it for its normal cost out of the graveyard. Um, this is a cool one. Feed the Pact, five and a green for an enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. You get X of them. Sorry, so you get X 2-2 two, two green wolf that's creature. That's 6 2-2 two, two green wolves with Brokos because it's a 6-6. Six, six. And then now you can put Brokos back onto any one of them. It gives, it kind of gets the the engine going, right? Yeah. Now if you have some sack outlets and some other stuff, this is where you can kind of really start to get synergistic. Speaking of sack outlets, greater good. This enchantment, you sacrifice a creature to draw cards equal to the creature's power, then discard three cards so pretty good you're going to draw six discard three and you're going to sort of again keep casting brokos over and over again brokos seems to be really good in any deck that likes the graveyard so sadisi brood tyrant is a card that obviously puts a lot of cards into the graveyard uh grave breaker lamia is another card that does that and you can also make spells from your graveyard cost one less to cast so brokos all of a sudden is even Four? cheaper than before that's pretty sweet yowks 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 yaisas was that yaisa and um... yaisa yowks yeah <laughs> uh Here's an interesting one. Nissa who shakes the world. Three green green for a legendary planeswalker, Nissa. It says whenever you tap a force for mana, you add an additional green. Pretty good. And then plus one is you put three plus one counters on up to one target non-creature land you control. You untap it and it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste that's still a land. Ooh, so, so you this can now, is nice. Yeah, you can now mutate onto that land. And because it's a plus one plus one counter, you're actually making Brokos a nine nine because it's yeah. three plus one plus one counters on a zero zero. So so that's actually an interesting synergy there because usually if you mutate on top it just takes the power and toughness of the card on top but counters stay i think you know this deck would have a lot of the similar stuff to otrimi ah yes right like the so pre-cons. yeah cephalid we, we talked about these in the upgrade uh deck tech for the soul type pre-con but mm-hmm. cephalid constable is the one that bounces your <laughs> opponent's permanence when it deals combat damage same thing would work here turn it into a six six bounce all their lands Ugh. uh Virtus the Veiled, they take damage equal to half their life total or whatever, so this in one hit knocks them down to 17. Yeah, stuff like that, I think. I I think the only difference here is that Otrimi was four to mutate, so you wanted all three CMC CMC or less stuff. stuff. Um, But it's five to mutate Brokos, so you can go up to four CMC for some of the stuff. Yeah. Pretty good card. I expect this to be a pretty fun deck if you decide to build it. Very Definitely not heavy. broken. Not broken, Pretty yeah. fair, but, but can powerful. Do some cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. Again, being able to play your commander multiple times for a cheap cost, not bad at all. All right. The next legendary creature we're going to talk about is Shevel. Almost said Shovel. 
Shevel, <laughs> Bane of Monsters. Just a black and a green, so two mana for a legendary creature, human rogue. So one three with death touch. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with the bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. Hmm. So in your upkeep, if no bounty counters are out there, you put a bounty counter on something. It's a creature or a planeswalker. And then if and when that thing dies, you draw a card and gain three life. Pretty cool. Now, do not put this on an opponent's commander because they are not technically dying. That's a good point. They never touch the graveyard when they switch zones. Most times players will move that to the command zone unless you're putting on their like Brokos or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, you know, we've seen bounty counters a couple times. Mathis uh, is one, but it works totally differently, right? Because yeah. ma- with Mathis, the bounty counters, it, a bunch of players get to draw cards and so you're trying to sort of tell everybody else to collect the yeah, bounty. please get the bounty from killing this card. Now, this is just you. This seems like a very one-on-one type card in general. Like, hey, I'm going to put a counter on something, I get a really good rate creature and if I happen to kill it, I'm going to get a lot of advantage off of that. It's also difficult to put multiple bounty counters out there so that like if somebody board wipes, you get to draw three cards. And right. Draw. It's not impossible, it's just difficult. I think Shevel has Death Touch, so we've talked about this before if your commander has death touch you pr- you usually want to turn it into a tim yep so viridian longbow or thornbite staff both yep. allow it to tap and deal damage and the death touch will kill the creature that's really good with uh shovel because you put the bounty counter on something then tap it and kill the thing and collect your bounty yeah and you can keep putting bounty counters on it because you can only have one pretty much at any yeah. time so you um, want that thing to die so you can put another one out another yeah. bounty counter out there yeah stratic resonator is going to let you double up draw Two cards, gain six life. That's huge game right there. Well, you should also be able to get, um, because it's an at trigger, right? At right. the beginning of your upkeep. So you can actually put two bounty counters out there with oh, two, that's right? right. Yeah, so and either one, can, it'll work on either side of the trigger. You can get rid of, get rid around that little, uh, that stipulation there. That's great. Yep. Uh, Generous Patron is an interesting one. So it's two and a green for a one four. It has support two when it enters the battlefield. That doesn't matter. But it says whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, hey. draw a card. So now you're at the beginning of your upkeep draw a card basically yeah. this for battle bomb was like put it on your teammates creature but in this case you're actually putting bounty counters and other stuff you're drawing more cards now with shovel that's pretty cool i yeah, like that cool. a lot uh bounty hunter adequate it's an old card for two black black and you can tap it to put a bounty counter on target non-black creature and you can also tap to destroy target creature with a bounty counter on it so this actually works great in mathis works yep. great in shovel it's just one of those auto includes that you're going to want to put in those decks and then speaking of mathis we should talk about the card just because it's related but it's going to be difficult to run both because they're they don't have a lot of overlap yeah. as far as colors they actually share one color <laughs> yeah so mathis is um mardu red white and black so three mana for a three three vampire with menace bingo with menace it says at the beginning of your end step put a bounty counter on target creature and opponent controls so it's similar right mm-hmm. but it's at your end step and it doesn't care if there's other bounty counters out there you just put one and then it says, for as long as that creature has a bounty counter on it, it has when this creature dies, each opponent draws a card and gains two life. Hmm. So for some reason, they up the life gain for Shevel. Uh, but all your opponents that don't control that creature are going to draw a card, right? Yeah. So so each opponent, yeah, of that of that Thing. creature basically yeah, yeah, yeah. draws a card. This is similar to Shovel, but not the same. If you manage to get both going in some weird deck that had all these colors... Five-color deck without blue. Four-color deck without when blue. when that creature died, you draw off the both triggers, and everybody else would draw off just the one trigger. Okay. Yeah. It's too bad that the, the bounty counters... There's only three cards, really, that make them. It's too bad they're not all in colors that can at least work together, because... Yeah. Yeah. So, bounty counter deck, probably not something that's going to happen, but... Yeah. Uh, you might be able to put Shovel in a Volrath deck, mm. which uh, you're putting minus one, minus one counters on one target creature at the beginning of your combat on your turn so you're just putting a lot of counters on stuff and then you can actually make volraf become a copy of a creature with a counter on it so shovel is just another way to get counters on stuff that isn't just volrath but if you're playing the volrath deck you probably have a thousand different ways of doing it anyway all right uh shovel seems fine not not a ton of support for something like i it. think shovel's built for li- standard yeah maybe past it into modern maybe 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 but for commander it's pretty un- underwhelming i'd say all right, you want to read the next yeah, one? Yeah, the next one, Lord Farquaad or Otto von Bismarck. <laughs> it does look like Otto von Bismarck. <laughs> it really does. I, they, I, they must have based it off him, right? Yeah. They, they look identical here. It's General Kudro of Dranith, one white and a black for a legendary creature, human soldier, 3-3. Three, three. Other humans you control get plus one, plus one, and whenever General Kudro or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from the opponent's graveyard. 
and you can pay two to sacrifice two humans to destroy target creature with power four or greater so the humans sort of do the the hunting of the big creatures which is kind of a typical thing for humans i think this is jarina kudra's father yeah jarina uh, kudra also likes humans somehow is another color but yeah her dad is a little simpler i guess <laughs> um there are a lot of good cards in the humans area that work well with this hero of precinct one might be the best it's one in a white for a human warrior two two whenever you cast a multicolored spell create a one one white human creature token Hey, party time. Yeah, the, you can use that to exile cards out of graveyards and destroy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Big stuff. Um, another, this is a new card. It's called Dire Tactics. It's we'll definitely talk about this one more. Yeah, it's right white, now. black for an instant. It says exile target creature. If you don't control a human, you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Wow. So, black, white, instant exile? Yep. For free, essentially, especially if you're doing a human deck. Bastion of Remembrance, another brand Wait, wait, new... how's it for free? What do you mean? Well, as in, like, you don't pay the life. You don't lose that Oh, life. gotcha. I was like, yeah, it still yeah. costs two mana. <laughs> yeah, it still costs two mana. Pretty good rate still. Yeah, uh, yeah. White and black, again, they they just get the greatest removal spells. Yeah, they really do. Bastion of Remembrance, two in the black for an enchantment. It's also a new card. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token, and whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Yeah, it feels like General Kudra is going to be aristocracy, right? Make a yeah. bunch of tokens, sacrifice those tokens for value, probably kill people with Blood Artist or Bastion of Remembrance type cards. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, there's another new card called General's Enforcer. White, black for a 2-3 human soldier. Um, it says legendary humans you control have indestructible. They're so protects your other. commander. Yep. And you can pay two white, black, and exile target card from a graveyard. And if it was a creature card, you create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So if General Kudra's out, you would then exile another. Yeah. And now you'd have your two humans you need for the, the yeah. you know, what's what's the destroy target creature with power four? Fell the mighty Fell type the, yeah. things. Fell yeah. the mighty is a board wipe. It's a, yeah, there's a bunch. Usually in limited, they have a you can kill this big thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. two white black to exile the card is a pretty expensive thing. Uh, in general, though, I think for this, you want instant speed tokens for this type of deck. Yeah, because, well, also to hose people who go after things in their graveyard, right? Right. They, like, like, if you just hold up mana and you can at instant speed make at least one human and they go to, like, reanimate something out of their graveyard, you go, yeah, I'll just make... Got them. I'll play Call the Copper Coats. Instant speed makes tokens. It's another... It's a new card from C20. Mm -hmm. Uh... It makes tokens based on how many creatures your opponents have. And you can strive and cast it based uh, to target more opponents. So you make a bunch of humans, exile stuff from their graveyard, hose the graveyard players. Always one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, it's pretty good. They never see it coming yeah. for some reason. <laughs> They're always like, oh, this is just going to happen. Wait, hold on. Yeah, hold on, yeah. <laughs> Rally for the throne, two in the white for an instant. Also making more human creature tokens. And you can also gain some life if you do so. So, yeah, I like General Kudro. It's not amazing, but it's not great. Human uh, tribal. When, I think you would rather... There's run, a lot of ways. Run Jarena or something just to have the extra color, but you yeah. never know. I mean, I mean this, this has graveyard hate and some other things going on. Putting the dad in the daughter deck seems fine, too. Again, I would definitely run Jarena if you had the choice because you're going to get access to red. All right. The next legendary creature is Iluna Apex of Wishes. This is the Ghidorah ah! from the Godzilla world. Yeah. Uh, based on how powerful Ghidorah is, let's see how good this card is. Yeah, it's... Because uh, Ghidorah's broken in... In, in, in Godzilla <laughs> yeah. world, yeah. Okay, so it's two green, blue, red. So two and Teemer, five mana total for a 6-6 six, six elemental dinosaur legendary... Or sorry, legendary beast elemental dinosaur. There you go. I forgot all of these have three creature types. Yeah. Um, it's It has flying and trample... It says, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card, put that card onto the battlefield or in your hand. Huh. And then it has mutate cost of three, a hybrid red-green, and two blue. So that's six mana total. And again, when this creature mutates, so it either mutates onto something else or it gets mutated onto, then you do the thing, which is exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card and then put that card onto onto the battlefield or into your hand. So you can either just choose to cast it for free, which is probably what you're going to do like 90% of the time. Yeah. Or if it's like, for whatever reason, you don't want that on the battlefield yet, you can put it into your hand. You still get it. Yeah, you could just drop Omniscience onto the battlefield. Oh my lord. Yeah, you, I, the first thing I thought of when I saw this card was like, what if I build a deck that has no non-land permanence in it except for like the one I want to hit? Right. Because it's going to keep going till it finds a mm -hmm. non-land permanent and then it's going to do the thing. So if Omniscience is the only non-land permanent in your deck, everything else is instants and sorceries or whatever, then you're going to hit it. Yeah, you're going to guaranteed hit it. Um, let's say you have a Thassa's Oracle right, yeah. type deck. You have no other permanents. You can definitely hit that as well. And so I think you need creatures to mutate onto, but there's a whole bunch of token creators that are sorceries or instants themselves. Yeah, totally. And so you play those, 
create tokens that give you targets to mutate onto. And then when you mutate onto one, you're just like, boom, Thassa's Oracle is a really good one, right? Because if Thassa's Oracle is already out and you do this, this says nothing about shuffle the rest back into your library or yeah. anything. So if you have Thassa's Oracle out, you mutate onto it with this, it's going to exile your entire library. And you win. And you win. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you flash this out, you would win, right? Because you, the thoughts, the way that the, you would stack the Thassa's Oracle trigger. I think so. You could have it be coming after it. Well, you could order the trigger. Thassa's Oracle trigger on the stack because you just cast it. In yeah. response, flash out. A Luna, mutate trigger happens. <laughs> Go through your whole library. Thassa. Triggers, win the game. Yeah. Um, and again, if you're running the food chain plus Miss Holographin or Eternal Scourge combo, you can make infinite mana and then sack this and just go through your entire deck either way. So you don't have to run a deck that's just trying to break this. Um, well, I mean, that is breaking it in a different way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have cards like Dryad Arbor also, oh, which is a, a non-human. Uh, right, non-human. And, and it's a non... Oh, okay. You can fetch it out with Green Sun Zenith, then play Luna, win the game, that sort of... Like, there's like a bunch of different ways to get through your entire deck if you decide to build it around that. So, uh, yeah. Aluna's good. But also, of course, if you want to have other mutate creatures on in this deck just to get the value from it, that's another way you could build it as well. Yeah, I think you could definitely build the fun version, which is not trying to combo like we're talking about here. It's yeah. just like mutating, getting value, setting up the top of your library sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And you have blue to do so as well. So, All right, well, t speaking of commanders that are not broken, definitely not broken, definitely totally not broken. fair and not broken. Let's definitely helping the out one. the colors that need the help. <laughs> it's Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. It's green and a blue. Oh, man, classically underpowered colors. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary creature, Human Druid 2-2. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. Oh, wait, there's more. Cause Why do they always do this? Like, hey, it's I know. not ramp. What would make it really broken? Well, if it could use that mana in some way... That doesn't require it to tap. <laughs> Urza all over again. For five, a green and a blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield, and you put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it's like Golos-esque, Urza-esque, green, blue, making all of your rocks tap for one extra now. Like, what the heck? It's just generically extremely good. It m makes your mana dorks and your rocks tap for more mana. Yep. And it's a two mana thing. Like Rorari's Wake does this for five mana, and that's basically all it does. I guess it pumps your creatures. Yeah. And then it says, oh, by the way, once you have a lot of mana, why don't you just spend that into the activated ability that you can activate as many times as you want mm -hmm. and just get all your non humans onto the battlefield? Yeah. Why turn, you do that. Turn two, you're going infinite with a Soul Ring and Basalt Monolith because Soul Ring taps for three, Basalt Monolith taps for four. Ugh. And then you can use a Gemstone Array to turn all that mana to any color that you want. And then you can just activate, you know. Can in a, a billion times. Why not? I mean, all your mana rocks are just so good in this deck. All your mana dorks are so good in this deck. Cryptolith, right? Mm. Incredibly good in this deck because it gives all your ability. It turns all your stuff into Birds of Paradise. Which yeah. You tap for two mana, so that's not even Birds of Paradise. It turns all your stuff into Bloom Tenders. Bloom Tender, very good in this deck. Yeah, and then you just play free from the real Appendence Aura, and boom, you're infinite again. Arkham's Astrolabe, everyone's favorite broken snow permanent. Also yeah. green, blue, the colors of snow permanent. Secretly the best common in the whole limited it, environment for yeah, that set. Right. Uh, Mox Amber is going to tap for two now. Like, there's just so many absurd things that happen with this card. Um, I don't even want to go through them because we could just play, yeah, play Thrasios. Thrasios and Thassa's Oracle, here you go. That's your win con because once you have infinite mana, you just go through your whole deck till you find Thrasios. And then Thrasios... Now you have infinite mana. You just activate just it. Just activate the As many time, times yeah. as you want. Or you can have Urza in there too to just activate as many times to find the other piece you need, which is probably Thassa's Oracle or Lab Man or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why they keep doing this. Yeah, this was... I, I wrote down talking points. Another broken Simic commander. Look, Chulane. I, it says WTF. I didn't read that part. I, I was going to say, what the... <laughs> Frank. Chulane, Chulane Vanifar Yawn. That's what I put out there. <laughs> I mean... Just generically good, absurdly powerful commanders that this one is now a two-mana commander. That's nuts. You just play this card in the 99 of any green-blue deck because you're probably going to have ways to ramp in that deck. It's you're just so easy to build, like, a really powerful version of this deck, and it'll just be generically good, and, I mean, it's going to be good. Like, listen, there's nothing to say about it except for it's going to be very, very strong. Is it, like, top-tier CEDH level? Don't know. Flash just got banned. This is in the Sushi Hulk colors, so it probably is less powerful than it would have been with Flash Legal, but... Who knows what that landscape looks like now? But either way, this is this is one of those decks we say um, sometimes like, hey, if you take this commander, Jarena mm -hmm. Kudro, and build it the most powerful it can be, it's probably like really tough to even get it to an eight. Yeah. 
Kinnon is the opposite. If you take this commander and just mess around with the first cards that come to mind, barely thinking about it, it's probably a seven and a half on accident. Yeah, it just has the power to ramp out and do the broken things in magic that we always love to say that we want to do. Yeah, I just, it's getting a little old that Simic's the one that gets these every time and that they're just so sort of generically powerful and boring. But hey, there must be a group out there that really likes it. Although I don't see Chu Lane very often. I don't see right. Prime Speaker Vanifar that often. I think that the community is kind of like, yawn, it's yawn, of it. like I said. Like yeah. they see this, it's like, yeah, it's powerful, but... It doesn't have that much spiciness to it in the way that you might want to have feel creative brewing a deck, and that that may be what people are going for. But again, if a single commander is better than every single you know white card combined that's been printed in the last two years, then I don't I don't yeah, doesn't really seem fair. Doesn't seem fair, yeah. All right, let's talk it's not about fair, Dad. <laughs> let's talk about the uh, the King Kong of the set. Now, this is not officially King Kong in the way that Godzilla is actually like they're using the IP. Yeah. Because um, King Kong is not a part of the Godzilla IP. Just Right. It's now. owned by Universal. Yeah. Uh, my old stomping grounds. But it's clearly King Kong based on the art. It looks sweet. It's Kogla the Titan Ape. <laughs> Three green, green, green. That's six mana for a legendary creature ape. It's a seven, six. When Kogla enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Okay. Whenever Kogla attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Oh, very nice. Doesn't have to deal combat damage or anything, just That's when cool. it attacks. Yeah, yeah. And it has another ability, because that wasn't enough. One in a green, return target human you control to its owner's hand. Love that. Kogla <laughs> gains indestructible until end of turn. Ah, very cute. That is King Kong holding someone uh, at the top of the Empire State Building, or yep. what in this case, a giant, a giant crystal. crystal. Yeah. yeah. This is clearly King Kong. Yeah. There's no, nothing. The flavor else on it's it. pretty cool. Fight stuff, destroys artifacts or enchantments, and protects humans, yeah. and also protects itself. itself right. Yeah. Although we all know how that turned out for King yeah. Kong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. True. Uh, great combo with this if you're playing this in a not full green shell. Charming Prince, one in the white for a creature, human noble two two. When it enters the battlefield, choose one. You can scry two, gain three life, or exile another target creature you own and return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Ha ha! Combo. Fight. Keep fighting. Also, bounce the bounce humans it back. back. Play it again. Ball. This is like the true uh, synergy here between human and beast. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Team or Sabretooth, right? And you can bounce creatures, but they can only be humans. So, wow, what kind of humans can we bounce? Eternal Witness. Oh, my Lord. That's a really good one. Uh, Dem Protector, I believe, is also a human. Yep. yep. Combat Celebrant, one that exerts to give you extra combat steps. Uh, there's a lots of different things you could do here. Uh, I, I like this card a lot. It's just fun. Right, I, I enjoy being able to bounce my Dem Protector again and give it an indestructible and smack with a giant ape. I think this, yeah, this goes in like a Xenagos God of Revels type deck, comes down, it's right. punch for a lot, it's hasty. So it goes, boom, fight something, kill it, attack right away, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Oh, gosh. If there's a human out, it can protect itself. Xenagos is just giggling. Yeah. Like, it's ah, a look at the terror I unleashed. Cool card, cool card. Not broken or anything, but very cool. Yeah, very cool. All right, what's All the right. next one? Uh, this next one has a lot of text. It is Nethroi, Apex of Death. This is Biolante. Yeah. Biolante? Biolante. I always the, heard Biolante, but it could be yeah. Biolante. You know, I, I, I've never even seen Biolante in any of the Godzilla movies. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I'm I, much listen, more used to the Ghidorahs of the world. For sure. I, I've seen most of the Godzilla movies, but it's been a long time, so I, do, I can't tell exactly which one, but I've yeah. seen the one uh, one or two with Biolante in it. I, right. Actually, is there only one? I don't know. Okay. I'm not <laughs> a Godzilla kind of the most but... recent one, I don't think. Oh, that's true. I don't think. All right. Uh, it's two white, black, and a green for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature, Cat Nightmare Beast. By the way, the colors on these, white, black, green, Cat Nightmare Beast, they always correspond with the three creature types, which oh, is cool. Oh, white is cat. Yeah, Nightmare black is black. Is nightmare, beast, beast is, is green. green. Oh, that's cool. Uh, mutate for four, and then a green, white, hybrid, black, black. And it's a Death Touch Life Linker. Whenever this creature mutates, oh God, return <laughs> any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Any number. Combo time. 10 or 10? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So one, you want to mill yourself. You want to discard cards. You want to use Hermit Druid, not like I used it. You want <laughs> to fill the graveyard up because when this thing mutates, uh, it's going to be nuts. Corpse yeah. Concert 2 is also a great card that you can use it twice to put cards in the battlefield. Or buried the graveyard, alive, sorry. Yeah, very live. Tomb. Those are like graveyard tutors, right? Tutor yeah. stuff to you or graveyard. So 10 is nuts. Craig 10 was is like, nuts. Craig was like, you know Crater Hoof Behemoth is a 5-5 five five, and so is uh, uh, Avenger of Zendikar, right? Oh, boy. So if you have a so, haste enabler, there you go. You win. Probably, you just yeah. create the combo. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. With one card, you can do that. And that's like out of nowhere, too, which is pretty crazy. Um, there's 
Doran, the Siege Tower, a lot of people are talking about. Cause oh, yeah, you can just throw it out there for zero? Yeah, it's zero. So, and then if, if it was a Doran deck, then Netheroid comes out and gets whatever you've got pretty much in your graveyard out, right? Because in Doran yeah. decks, most stuff has zero or one power. So it's just like, oh. boom, I get like 17 things. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, if you have zero, zero creatures as well, those are going to be awesome here. A Josh Lee quite favorite is Workhorse. This is a cool card. It's a zero, zero, right? So it comes in. You can put in. If you had infinite zero zeros in your graveyard, they all can come in because of uh, Nethroi. Yeah, so all these creatures like Workhorse comes in and, and enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. But in the graveyard, it's a zero zero. And this one also, you can remove a plus one counter to add a uh, colorless mana to your mana pool. So you get four mana back with Workhorse, which is There's pretty crazy. There's got to be some combo tastic stuff you can do there. Yeah, other cards that come in as zero zeros, Fertilid, Custody Soul Binders. These are all cards that are nuts when they come back again. New Scrap Mob. You're just building a huge board here because these are all zero zeros. Colonian Hydra. Yeah, there's technically zero zeros, but they're actually much bigger because of the plus one counters. Oh, the new Pelucranos too. That's like a six six, right? Yeah, but again, it's zero zero and it enters the battlefield uh, with six plus one plus one counters on it. Yep, really cool. I think also like reanimation uh, creatures. So yeah, Revelark, famously, and Karmic Guide. And these are combo synergy cards. So you get Karmic Ride back, which is only two power, but it brings back something else when it comes into play yeah. that like allows you to bring back even more than 10 power, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and if you just want to do Protean Hulk combos too, this is the kind of deck I think you could just run tons of, you know. Sure, Blow sure. things up, put them on the battlefield. <laughs> All right, we won't talk more about Nethroi. Nethroi is one of those cards I think is absurdly powerful. Um, if you build your deck the right way, you could have a turn where you mutate and your board goes from zero to 20 creatures. Yeah, yeah. And if you have a haste enabler, that definitely there's going to be games ended by like you just resolved Nethroi. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the mutate on Nethroi. All right, the next one is Riel, the Everwise. We've talked about this card a little already. It's, uh, sorry, in previous videos. Mm -hmm. It's one, a blue and a red for a legendary creature, human wizard, a zero three would count as zero for uh, Nethroi. Oh, yeah. I'm saying. If you're playing that five-color deck, five-color <laughs> sure. Nethroi mutate. Uh, that's how we do. All right. <laughs> Riel the Everwise gets plus one, plus zero oh for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. And then says, whenever you discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, draw that many cards. So you get this trigger once per turn, but you get to draw as many cards as you discarded. Yeah, they, we haven't seen stuff something like this ever. This is, yeah, the way that it's worded is it's kept in check a little by the fact that you don't, you can't get ROG, right? You can't right. like go to your discard phase, discard for cleanup and then draw that many cards and then discard again, yeah, and then draw that yeah. many cards. But you get to do that kind of thing one time. So a Wheel of Fortune draws you 14, right? Yeah. If you have seven cards in hand when you mm -hmm, do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, this is great in the Locust God type deck. This is just blue, red draw cards, do things with it written all over it. Niv Mizzet Perun is another example. Both the Jaya Ballards, the original one, which is like discard up to three cards and draw that many cards. Well, guess what? You're drawing three plus three, six cards off of that single plus one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Jaya Ballard Task Mage is wanting you to discard all the time and you're actually gaining stuff back. You're drawing those cards that you discard when you activate these abilities. Um, Windfall. Windfall, Telerian Winds, Dak Fade In. Uh, forbid oh boy forbid oh that's mean this I didn't is even think about mean that. so forbid is one blue blue for an I instant uh it says counter target spell but it has buyback of choose and discard two cards so with forbidden <laughs> real you basically can for free sorry for three mana still yeah because you're gonna discard the two cards and then draw the two cards and that was presumably on jimmy's turn and then it goes to the next turn and now I have Riel can like trigger again. Yeah. You bought back the counter spell. You can just keep buying this oh, back. Brutal. And typically it's like, oh, you have to discard two cards. We'll very hope you have a good card draw engine. Guess what? You're well, and that's wrong. how people power through it. They're like, yeah. okay, let's just cast six spells. If they counter them all, they have no cards left, whatever. Yeah, that's bad for them. But this is like, no, you're just replacing the cards you're discarding. So you just need the mana. Yeah, the... Uh, Jumpstart mechanics really handy too, where you can cast a card from the graveyard by discarding a card in addition to playing its other's costs. Beacon Bolt is perfect because it cares about instant and sorceries in your graveyard as well. Underworld Breach, a card we'll probably mention at least once every set review from here on till out till the end of time. It's yeah, it's gonna be a red staple and it yeah, gives one in all, red. It gives everything in your graveyard escape. Yep, and it's the mana cost of the card plus exiling three other cards. Guess what? You're discarding tons of cards already, and you're drawing cards to replace them now. Yeah, Faithless Looting, draw two cards and discard two 
cards. How about draw four cards? Discard two cards for one mana, and then it has flashback, so you get to do that twice. Yeah. Uh, burning Inquiry. Each player draws three cards, then discards three cards at random. Oh, my So Lord. you get six cards off of this, but everyone for else one discards mana. three. Uh, Goblin Lore, which is a card we saw in uh, with the Hollowed One sort of modern deck. Draw four cards and discard three cards at random. You don't care about those cards. They probably got flashback. You probably got ways to bring them back. You're drawing you got, six and, more you got cards. You Underworld Breach in your deck, so it doesn't matter. And you're drawing seven cards with that for two mana. Yeah, this real is the real deal. Yeah, the real deal. There was a pun there somewhere. I just couldn't find it in time. <laughs> There's breakthrough for X in the blue where you draw four cards and choose X card in your hand and discard the rest. So if you just pay a zero for X, you draw four cards and then you discard your whole hand and then you, you just draw, draw that more minute. cards. Yeah, yeah. So this is like these cards just go nuts with real. Um, there is better than. Uh, than Ancestral Recall then, so because you'll end up four cards up for their one mana, right? Yeah, and oftentimes you're going to want those cards in your graveyard because they directly benefit Riel as well. This is the deck that has flashback written all over it. Wow. Um, this sounds really fun, actually. I'm just going to draw all the cards. I don't know how yeah. you win from all this, but it doesn't matter. You just well, get all the cards. maybe you do Firestorm. Uh, red Instant as an additional cost to cost the spell. Discard X cards, <laughs> and then Firestorm deals X damage to X targets. So if you have a hand of like a, you know, you're gonna 50 get, like, cards. You're going to have like 20 cards in your hand on the real deck, like often, right? And all the cards in your hand all read get positive net of cards when you cast it so you're just like boom yeah yeah you're gonna want to put the eldrazi shufflers in this deck almost guaranteed uh just so you one don't or two, yeah. yeah so you don't deck yourself um and then uh there is song of creation which is a brand new card in teamer which is one green blue red enchantment you may play an additional land on each of your turns and whenever you cast a spell draw two cards at the beginning of your end step discard your hand oh uh, so Okay, but re it couldn't go in the real deck. You need to be in a different deck. You need to be in a different deck. deck, and Riel's in there. Okay. <laughs> but pretty nuts. Uh, and there's actually a really cool graph that someone made uh, of all the cards you can draw maximum with Riel. If you have, like, for instance, Windfall with a seven-card hand, what can you get off it? We'll link that below. It's a spreadsheet. It shows all of the possibilities. I think the most cards you can draw is 14. I want to draw 14 cards. I want to draw 14 cards, yeah, too. Yeah, this... Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the least exciting creature in the set. It's Snapdax, <laughs> Apex of the Hunt. If you can is guess... It? I think it's the second least. Oh, there, you know what? There is one that could potentially, yeah, get be less exciting because it's banned. Um, Snapdax is a Mardu card. It's a, it's a legendary creature. Dinosaur, cat, nightmare. So dinosaur for red, cat for white, nightmare for black. Okay. It's a 3-5. It's got mutate for two, uh, uh, Rakdos uh, uh, hybrid, then white, white. It's a double strike. Whenever this creature mutates, it deals four damage to a creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and you gain four life. This is a limited card or standard card. Yeah, I mean, I think like death touch creatures, if you're mutating onto, that's going to kill a creature, right? Because you give it death touch. So still, still out. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's not great, but Torbrand, something like that. Like, there's, okay, yeah, you can you, like up the damage a little up bit. Up the here. damage a little bit and do some stuff. I, listen, it's not going to be an amazing deck, and it's probably going to be pretty straightforward, but. You know, I don't think it's actually the worst legendary creature in the set, but we'll get we're gonna get to that in a second. You can definitely at least play this in a Mardu deck as well, yeah. because when you mutate, it's gonna deal a lot of damage. You're gonna gain some life. It's got double strike. You it probably basically have... give something. What is it? It's a three five, right? So yeah. if you if it's if there's a big creature out there that's a non human, you giving it double strike and destroying something. Yeah. You know, maybe all of a sudden you're swinging with your commander or something for a lot of damage because of the double strike. So I just wish you could do it to players, right? It, yeah. Target creature or planeswalker. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, but. But look, beggars can't be choosers. We can't all get Kin and Bonder Prodigy every time. <laughs> Definitely, if you're not Simic, you can't get that. Yeah, it's what a stark difference. Hey, yeah. here are the three cards that aren't Simic. Guess what? <laughs> Enjoy it. All right. Uh, the next one is Vadrock, Apex of Thunder. This is Rodan. Rodan is pretty cool. That was Rodan he, is. Yeah, Rodan cool. was in the new movie. Thunder. Rawr, 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 rawr. Okay. Blue, a red, and a white. Three mana total. Jeskai colors for a legendary creature. Elemental dinosaur cat. It's a 3-3. Three, three, has mutate for one. And then a hybrid Azorius and two red. So that's four mana total to mutate. Hmm. It has flying and first strike. So three mana, three, three, flying, first strike. Pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of like a Mantis Rider, but better. Yeah. Whenever this creature mutates, you may cast target non-creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Oh. So for four mana, you mutate onto something, and then you get three of it back by casting the card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Also, interestingly, it doesn't exile the card that you cast for free, which most of these cards do. Right. It just casts it and then puts it back onto the uh, battlefield like it was brand new. 
brand that's spanking new. Pretty cool. Makes me immediately think of Savine's Reclamation, right? Because it's that yeah. ramp card in those colors as far as lands. I like to fairy Time Raveler, who is a planeswalker that you can uh, cast, mm -hmm. and then you can bounce your Vedrock with Teferi with its minus three, draw a card, and repeat the process next turn if someone kills your Teferi. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The fact that you just get to get a card without paying the mana cost is pretty neat. Um, and it's permanent, right? Like, it's it's a target non-creature card, right? That's that's pretty impressive. You get Planeswalkers off this sort of thing. Yeah. That means also that the the Rodan version, the Mutate, just costs you one mana to give something flying in first strike. Yeah. Savenge Reclamation, like Josh said, great with this. Two and white for a sorcery. You can return target permanent card with CMC three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Very similar to his ability there. If the spell is cast from a graveyard, you can copy it and choose a new target so you can flash it back for four and a white. We're saying this a lot recently, and I feel like we're probably saying it too much, but wheel effects seem really good yeah. with... Uh, this obviously you want things in your graveyard right because that gives you just more options mm -hmm. of three cmc stuff that you can now cast for free and most wheels are three cmc so you can also cast them to for free and keep going yeah so it feels like the wheel deck is okay we get it wizards wheels are good we don't need to make wheelie wheelie good cards anymore yeah i don't like discarding my hand so let's not do that i mean wheels are cool but it's just like so many commanders yeah. now are like this is good with wheels oh guess what that one's good oh real real good with, good with wheels real oh. might be the most in your face like hey you know what i'm good with <laughs> wheels like, yeah we get yeah brawlin and shabras oh, you know what they're good with wheels hey Focus god wheels wheels cyrus you wheels. get a wheel. Yeah. You get a wheel. Uh, Mystic Remora is also really good with this card because uh, it's a card that's an enchantment that's going to go away because it has a cumulative upkeep. So later on in the game when you're like, you know what? I'll just cast this for free again. Maybe draw awesome. some more cards off it. Yeah, we mentioned really, this. Really Anytime we talk about Jeskai, we talk about its ascendancy. Jeskai ascendancy is really good in this deck too. So it is, yeah. it is blue, red, and white for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until I'm turning you and tap them. But also whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So... Whew. Yeah, you could just get on kind of a roll there where you're filling your graveyard with exactly the cards you want to cast for free with Rodan. I'm going to call yeah. it Rodan because... Yeah, it's better. And also, I forgot the actual name. <laughs> no, Rodan is Bad Rock, maybe? Dead, dead Rock? Is that what you just bad said? Bad Rock. <laughs> I think it's, it's got a dead, dead Rock. Dead Rock. <laughs> it's got a dead bod, Rodan. Uh, Underworld Breach, how about casting that another time? It is Bad Rock, by the way. Yeah, Vadroke. Oh, Vadroke. I like Dead Rock, though. That's dead hilarious. <laughs> You're right, it's Vadroke <laughs> or something cool, not Vadrock. Crystal Shard again, you can bounce it to your hand. You're going to want to like move it back to your hand to remutate it to yeah. get like additional value to get your free spells. And again, it doesn't exile the card that you're getting out of your graveyard. Uh, I don't know if this is a mistake or purposeful on Wizard's part. Regardless, it screams value to commander players because it means you can repeat it over and over again. All right. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. one. Yeah, this is a pretty cool one. Finally. Yeah. Boros gets a little bit of help here. A little bit. Whew. This card might be broken in standard. Who see? Well, no. Yeah, but I think in Commander, it's like, it's yeah. good. It's good. It's very good, but it's not broken, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's Winota, Joiner of Forces. Two red, white for a legendary creature. Human Warrior, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until in, end of turn. That's the the human you put mm -hmm. into play. And then you put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. Very nice. Interesting tug and pull with this commander, right? Non-humans trigger it, but it wants to find humans, humans off the top of your deck, which I think is supposed to sort of keep it in check. But it seems ah. like there's a bunch of human creatures that create non-human things yeah and that's kind of what you want right so that you can find the human off the top of your deck but then it creates non-humans that trigger winota yeah and notably a lot of those cards that like make warriors those are actually not, not humans, humans. Yeah. they're just warriors also winota says whenever a non-human yes. creature you control attacks and it doesn't include itself which is huge because normally these commanders we find that they're the ones that have to attack like a tolly or whatever but you can just play winota have something else swing and boom you're triggering you've got ability. five warriors that aren't humans like tokens that's five triggers that's 30 cards you're gonna look at yeah yeah and so najila the blade blossom is a human warrior that whenever a warrior attacks you may have his controller create a one one white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking yep and then for Wooburg, you can untap all your creatures. They gain Trample, Life, Link, and Haste. After this phase, an additional combat phase. So if you're going to play a card in the Gila, we know this seems pretty darn good there. As long um, as you have enough humans that you could hit. Yeah. And yeah. again, before Winota comes out, you're going to want to play cards that create tokens or creatures that aren't humans that can attack and trigger it. So raise the alarm. Yep. One in the white instant, make some white soldier creature tokens. 
dragon fodder, a sorcery that makes 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens. Yep. But notably, these aren't going to be mishits if you reveal them with Winoda. And then you're going to want... Like well, they Josh are. Said, you can't, you yeah, can't yeah. cast them, yeah. Um, but like Josh said, you're going to want to find creatures that can trigger both sides of Winoda here. Yeah, they are humans, but they create non-humans. So like Hero of Bladehold is 2 white white for a 3-4 human knight. So... You can reveal it off the top six and put it into play taps and attacking, but it says uh, it has battle cry whenever this creature attacks. Each other attacking creature gets plus one, plus zero oh until end of turn. And it also says whenever Hero of Bladehold attacks, create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Those are not humans. Now, we got. We should clarify. Yes. When Winota brings it in tapped and attacking, you will not get the attack trigger. So Hero will not on that first attack create two soldiers however if you untap with it and now attack attack you're now you are making the things and again they enter tapped and attacking it takes a little while but what you get is this nice split between yes i can find it off winota yeah but also helps me trigger winota yep i always want to say winona winona rider the greatest boros commander ever (laughs) no Feather is still better, okay, and, and Fire yeah. Song and Sun Speaker is probably still better. But this is a good, this is a good card for uh, combat too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, loyal apprentice, one in a red for a human artificer, a two one with haste, and it has a lieutenant. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, create a one one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and that token gains haste until end of turn. This is great synergy here. Really cheap card to play as well. Another card that the, the yeah the Thopters trigger when out his front side and also you can find it because it's a human yep and you're going to want to again prioritize three cmc two cmc spells here so that they can attack when when it comes out so p and alar is a two and a red creature that creates a one one colorless slapter creature token it can also stop some creatures from blocking so it might make it easier for you to get in for some damage yep um season pyromancer another thing that creates elemental creatures but is a human itself mm-hmm uh, Annex Hardened in the Forge. Oh, uh, this one's great, actually. Yeah, this is one red red for a legendary enchantment creature, Demigod. It's star three. Annex's power is equal to the, your devotion to red. And then it says, whenever Annex or another non-token creature you control dies, you create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token with this creature can't block. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, if the creature had four power or greater, the creature that died, you create two satyrs instead. So, so more so. Winona triggers. Yep. Annex is like one of those classic new standard mono red cards, which is just like, you can get rid of my stuff, but I'm just going to keep coming back. Fortunately, Annex looks like a human, but is not. Is a legendary it's a enchantment demigod, creature. Yeah. Demigod, yeah. I've, it's fine because those warriors in the pictures are like, that's, that's a human. definitely a human. That's definitely a human, yeah. but for our purposes it's, it's just not. a warrior yep. cards you want to flip using winota so cards you don't want to cast because they cost a lot is lena selfless champion a four white white legendary human knight three three when it enters the battlefield you create a one one white soldier creature token for each non-token creature you control you can stack this where you put in a bunch of other creatures and then lena comes in makes a ton more tokens yep and then you can sacrifice it uh and you make creatures with power less than lena's indestructible until the turn uh, Angrath's Marauders, five red red for a four four human pirate. So again, you don't want to cast this; you want to reveal it. Mm-hmm. And if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. Ooh, so wait. it's damage doubler. Yep. Yeah, Zealous Conscripts, again, a human that you can come in and steal something and maybe sack it. It does come in tapped and attacking before blocks, too, so it gets rid of a blocker. Right, right. Shared Animosity, it's going to get plus one, plus so for each creature other than that that shares a creature type to attacking. It's just basically like, look, swing out, do a ton of damage, cycle through giant chunks of your deck based on how many creatures you have on the battlefield. I think this is another deck where you, again, run a wheel, where you want to be able to cycle cards out of your hand if you don't want them, have like an Eldrazi to shuffle it back into the deck. I mean, I would put Top and Scroll Rack... Those, sure. are, those are the ones you want because you want to be like, oh, uh, Leona got stuck in my hand. Let's put it back on top of my deck here. And now yeah. I know I'm getting it and I can plan for it. But if you are going to be put going through like, what, 30? It's not unreasonable, right, to look through 30 cards yeah. in your deck each time. If you want to bring some cards back in your graveyard, you're going to want to find a way to recycle those too. So it, it seems pretty good. I like Winoda. I think it's, for me, I'm like, cool. This is a card that's going to do damage and, and speed up the game and also make players have to do something about it. It has a lot of value attached to it. I mean, I think it's not... People are, like, pretty excited, and I think, ultimately, you got to attack, and yeah. you have to go into combat, and that's how you do stuff with this deck, which is not that different than Boros decks, and it's still going to suffer from the problems of... You don't have card draw and you don't have ramp. So 
and it doesn't help you hit your land drops. So <laughs> it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be good, but I don't think it's groundbreaking. At least you can kill people before they hit their land drops. <laughs> okay, this next one is what I think is probably the uh, worst yeah. commander All out right, of the bunch. But it's Godzilla. Yeah, one of Godzillas. It's Yadaro, wandering monster. Yeah, this is there are two Godzillas because there's a buy box promo that's also Godzilla. Uh, this is five red red, seven mana for a legendary creature, Dinosaur Turtle. It's an 8-8 with Trample and Haste for seven mana. It has Cycling, though, for one and a red. Okay. So when you cycle Yudaro, shuffle it into your library from, from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named Yudaro four or more times this game, put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. Wah. Do this before you draw. So it's really meant for the... The, car, the formats where you can put four of a card in your mm -hmm. deck because it eventually becomes a two-mana draw card, get an 8-8, eight, eight, trample haste out uh, after you've sort of, you know, yeah. gone through the rigmarole of cycling this Well, you get times. the creature, then yeah. you draw a card. Not sure if that really matters there, but... In our format, it's a lot more difficult to pull this off. You can only have one of them in your deck. Your deck's a lot bigger than the 60-card formats. <laughs> you need to be able to shuffle. It, it shuffles itself back into your library, but you... You want to be able to like somehow find it again, get it into your hand, and then yeah. the reward you get for all of that at the end of the day is an eight eight trample haste. Yeah, you want to play greater Gargadon if you want a big creature that has way more value attached to it. It's fine because the Godzilla version of this is Godzilla Doom Inevitable. And it's Yadara, wandering monster. <laughs> it's <laughs> a like, dinosaur turtle. Yeah, compared to how vicious Godzilla looks on the other side. Um, there are some cards you can play with this. Unpredictable Cyclone is a new enchantment. Uh, if a cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card, instead, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycled card. So you get more value off of it. Well, maybe if you build a deck that, like, only had... Yeah. Godzilla, right? Or well, does this happen before you do I, it? It's it's in you are instead doing it. So it's before the you cycling ability in. would cause you to draw a card. I believe you cycle... But it says you do this before... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't Yudaro say do this before you draw the card? Well, you're, if you do it four more times, then you put Yudaro onto the battlefield before oh, you draw. Oh, that's the part it's referring to. Yeah. Okay. So, and then you can cycle unpredictable cycle. Look, don't make this card work, people, please. Just don't. <laughs> do you put it in a cycling deck? <sighs> I guess if you're somehow. I don't even think so you do because. Going to make it through your deck that many times for Yudaro. I don't think I don't you do know. because it's a card that literally only says pay one in a red cycle, right? Like, yeah. Like the rest of the text is never going to happen. So. And like you'd much rather, well, like if you pull up the list of other cycling cards in the deck, you're probably going to rather draw one of those instead of Yudaro over and over again too. Probably, okay. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the last legendary creature that's not a companion. It is another Godzilla card. This is the buy a box promo for this set. Yep. It's Zalortha, Strength Incarnate, or Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Three, a red and a green for a legendary creature dinosaur. Okay, this is more fitting than what it, what it was it a, a dinosaur turtle. Yeah. Um, I guess it's a Godzilla dinosaur turtle when she's like hanging out under the ocean. Turtle? Yeah. Okay. I didn't get turtle vibe from Godzilla you know, ever. How fast that thing moves on screen definitely feels like a turtle sometimes. He's definitely... He's I'm not, always just like, Godzilla, he's not turtly enough for the run! <laughs> you, you have legs, run! It's, why are you moving so slow? Yeah, why are you just cromping around? And then every time Godzilla gets knocked over, you're like, well, you could have dodged that. <laughs> All right, anyway. You want Godzilla to be, like, nimble? I mean... It he's would, huge! You, yeah, it would make him even more broken, I guess. He already wins everything, so yeah, what's the point? He's the king of the monsters. It's a 7-3 with Trample, and Salortha reads, lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness so it's a reverse doran yeah so if you want to kill zalortha you have to deal seven damage to it not three it's a seven three and <laughs> it makes all your creatures uh sort of care about their power more than their toughness basically it's yep. not the exact same as doran but it's similar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah uh, yeah. This. Can you play Infinity Elemental in this deck? It's in Infinity <laughs> 5. <laughs> Infinity and 5. You can never kill it. It's impossible. Well, you can because here's the thing. It doesn't actually change the toughness to be equal to their power. Ah, I see. So like un like Toxic Deluge. Okay. For three, it's not dealing damage. It's giving it negative, negative three. Negative three, three right. So, and that's why it's not as good as Dorn. I'm wondering why they didn't template this card. Creatures you control have toughness equal to their power. Yeah, it's interesting. If lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness. Yeah, so it only really cares about damage. Yeah. Um, you put a really fun one here, Force of Savagery. If you're able to give anything a plus X plus one, Yeah. this is a two and a green for an eight zero creature elemental with trample. So Three mana, eight zero. <laughs> Immediately dies to state base effects unless you have a, an anthem or something. Some sort of anthem, yeah. Yeah. 
Kessig Wolf Run's really fun here. It's a yeah. land that you can give a creature plus X plus O, so you can just kind of like a combat trick almost if they're trying to kill it with damage. Uh, Ride of the Raging Storm. Our, is this our very first it's preview card? It's our very first preview card. Oh, no, Impact Tremors was. This is our second, I think. Oh, Impact Tremors? I've... Maybe it, this was... I... Oh, no, you're right. I think this was our second. It was in the Commander Precon. Anyway, it's an enchantment that creates a 5-1 red elemental creature tokens, and so, you know, those are kind of really 5-5s. Five fives. Again, they're not the same as 5-5s, five fives, but they're similar. One thing to note here as I was looking at this card and something I came across was if a creature has a power of zero... Mm -hmm. So lethal damage is dealt according to its power. Right. It doesn't just immediately die. It still has to have some amount of damage marked on it. Oh, uh, okay. But if it has... Maybe that's why it's templated the way it is. Maybe. Uh, yeah, because if it was an X0 in the Doran deck, it wouldn't work. But, but a, zero a zero X, X does have the... Sure. It's, sure. Still seems like it wouldn't be broken the other way around. Play this card in Xenagos, right? That, that works. So <laughs> yeah, Lortha, Xenagos, go. best friends. That, in Xenagos, it's great, of course. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, that's going to do it for just the legendary creatures that don't have companion. However, we're about to get to all ten really nine of the legendary <laughs> creatures that do have companion. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. Let's see which ones of them we think will actually work as companion, which you want to run as your commander or not. There's a lot to talk about because that mechanic is very contentious. Mm -hmm. But before we get into it, we're going to take a quick break and hear a message from our sponsors. So Josh, it finally happened. Uh-oh, what happened? The end of an era. I found the smallest hole in my oldest pair of MeUndies. Wait, what? Yep. That pair was a true hero, though, and I've had it forever, so I went back and I looked, and I found the exact date I bought them. And? January 1st, 2017. <laughs> Over three years ago? Wait, was this uh, like a holiday gift? Yeah, it was a New Year's gift. I bought on January 1st, you know, New Year, new MeUndies. <laughs> <laughs> and that's value. I mean, like, I still wear the MeUndies I got that year, and they're all in great shape and super comfy still. Well, it sounds like it's time to re-up, you know, a monthly membership. That might be the perfect thing for you. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. The Me Undies membership lets me slowly refresh my clothing and underwear on a monthly basis, so it's piece by piece. Plus, you can get to 30% off on each order with the membership, so it's an amazing discount. I mean, we just can't recommend Me Undies highly enough. True story, I currently have two monthly subscriptions <laughs> with them. Did you know that? <laughs> what? Because I got one for myself and then received one as a gift, but the clothing is so great and comfortable, I, I just decided to keep both. Best yet, first time purchasers get 15% off and free shipping. All you gotta do is go to MeUndies.com com slash command yeah they have every size you're looking for from extra small to four times extra large they have a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee this is a great deal go to meundies.com slash command today all right we are back and we are talking about Icoria, Lair of Behemoths, but this time it's the companion part of the episode because there are a lot of new legendary creatures more than normal in the set because there is a new mechanic called companion. So we're going to briefly discuss that. Again, we did an entire video talking about the mechanics of this set, so make sure you check that out. It's going to be on our channel, and of course, subscribe if you haven't hit the notification bell so you can make sure you're alerted the moment our new content comes out. Yeah, let's just quickly, really quickly go over companion. We don't need to dive deep here. All of these next... 10 creatures we're about to talk about, really nine, have companion, which is a companion. You can have only one. You can't run multiple companions. They start outside of the game. They have a requirement for your deck. So, for example, the first card we're going to talk about is Gyruda, Doom of Depths, and it says, Companion, your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. So this card can be your companion if you meet that criteria, and then you can cast it, one time from the companion zone. <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. Welcome to the companion zone. <laughs> and then that's it. From that point, once you cast it, it acts as a normal card. If it gets countered, it goes to your graveyard. If it goes into the battlefield, gets destroyed, goes to your graveyard. If it gets exiled, goes to exile, and it's just like a card in your deck that got exiled. You can't now cast it again because it's a companion. Yeah. You get basically one usage of this card. It does not count towards the 100 cards. So you get 100 cards, 99 usually, and your commander. This is a 101st card for all intents and purposes. Yep. But uh, did I cover everything here? You oh. can use this companion as your commander and the companion. It has to just be one. It's still singleton. So if it's your companion, that's it. Yep. But it, it, they're legendary creatures, so they can be your commander or they can be in your deck. Yeah. But you can't, you know, again, you can't have a companion and one of those other two. That's a good point. If it's oh. in your deck, just ignore the text that says companion and it just acts as a regular card otherwise. Yeah, if it's your commander also, you don't have to worry about meeting the criteria, the deck building restriction. Mm -hmm. You only need to meet the criteria if you're using it as a companion. Oh, one final thing, or two final things. One, yes, you still have to obey color identity. 
So just because it starts the game outside the game doesn't mean that you can put Gyruda, who is um, Demir hybrid, into a deck that doesn't have black in it. Mm-hmm. You still have to have both those colors. And secondly, uh, oh gosh, oh, your commander has to abide by the restriction as well. Your commander, if you're having as companion, yeah. Yeah, so if Gairud is your companion, your commander also has to be even converted mana cost. Mm-hmm. Your commander counts as in your deck. Okay, that's about as quick as we could do it. Um, all right, we're going to talk... Watch the mechanics video. We talk about way more. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about these cards in different contexts, right? So sometimes we're going to refer to them as if they were com- your companion, sometimes as if they were your commander, and sometimes maybe as if they're in your 99. So we'll, okay. try, we'll try and be clear about that, but this is a little difficult because there's a third area to talk about them, right? We usually only have two. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start off with Garuda, Doom of Deaths, also Gigan, Cyberclaw Gigan. Terror. Gigan, sorry. Four, again, uh, Demir Demir. So six mana for a 6-6 six, six legendary creature, Demon Kraken with Companion. The, again, the stipulation, your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. When Garuda enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Before we talk about anything else, <laughs> Garuda, Doom of Deaths, that's four words, Yep. even. Uh, it's four blue blue uh, or four demir demir so it's six mana even Uh, even. it is a legendary creature demon kraken that's four right there it's also got uh, I think four visible tentacles Uh, it also has words in the text box someone count them all up also even but it's just a 50-50 chance (laughs) the only thing that's odd is the freaking collector number yeah why is the collector number 221 why couldn't they just made it 220 (laughs) they got so close to perfection (laughs) so close okay that's Somebody put in a lot of effort for counting the text box. I'm yeah. just going to take their word for it. I am too, actually. I didn't count it. But, you know, you wouldn't lie on the internet. Who would do that? Who would do that? Who <laughs> do that? Let me just read the, the, the rules text, not the companion part again. Again, this is the even CMC mm-hmm. uh, everything. When Gyruda enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into the graveyard. Each player. And then you put a creature card from, with an even converted mana cost from among those cards. Oh. Only the four that were revealed, right? It's not yeah, from their graveyard. Cards, yeah. yeah. But you put it onto the battlefield under your control. So you're obviously your whole deck is going to have even converted mana cost if this is your companion. If not, and it's just in your deck, you're just kind of hoping that out of the 16 cards in a four-player game that are revealed, there will be a creature that's even converted mana cost, which seems... Pretty likely. Yeah, I guess I don't I have no frame of reference to know. I would say 16 cards, at least four to five of them probably creatures on average. So one or two, and if you consider One or two half. of those, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, it might be a Sakura Tribe Elder, but who knows? It could be something great. Do not play this if your meta has Void Winnower in it. Because your <laughs> well, deck... Well, don't play it as your, as your companion. Yeah, yeah. You can play it in the deck, but Void Winnower literally will shut your deck off if you if Garuda is your companion. Yeah, Void Winnower is 9 mana for an 11-9 <laughs> Eldrazi, but it says your opponents can't cast spells with even converted mana costs. What the heck? So you can't cast spells anymore in the Garuda deck. <laughs> yeah, but you can put insane cards onto the battlefield that have even converted mana costs, so it that betrays is 12 CMC. Spark double, three and a blue. You can, again, uh, with clones that have even CMC, a lot of them are four mana. Sakashima as well. Are Those are both ways of repeating the Garuda effect. I think clones are actually really good in the deck, right? Because worst case scenario, you pick the clone. It comes in, makes a copy of Garuda, and you do it again. Yeah, you lose the Garuda, but hey, at least you get to go again. Yeah, and then when you hit something awesome off of an opponent's thing, you've got clones in your deck to make copies of it too. Yeah, even better with Spark Double and Sakashima is they won't trigger the legendary effect. Yep, that's true. Uh, Thassa Deep Dwelling is a good card in this deck. It's three and a blue for a 6-5 mm-hmm. god. I won't read the god text, but what it says, at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that creature that card to the battlefield under your control. So you get the guy Ruta triggers again and again. Obviously, Blink, Conjurer's Closet is Thassa Deep Dwelling basically too. Yeah, you can Dead Eye Navigator and yep. just trigger this endlessly. You could also oh, make a Mill Day Calidus, so right? Good. Dead Eye might mill everybody out. Yeah, yeah right? If you make infinite mana with Garuda and Dead Eye, then all of a sudden you just mill everybody, including yourself though, so be careful. Yeah, be very, very careful. You just have a even converted mana cost Eldrazi that none of them do that, do they? And Blightsteel <laughs> doesn't either. Hmm. hmm. Okay. That's a sticky wicket. You just need something that's a shuffle effect. Blue and black are the colors to mill. So Phoenix type decks, this could be a good card for you here. Um, Illusionist Stratagem, Siren's Ruse, Teferi's Time Twist. These are all spells that allow you to flicker your creature. Yep. And because you are getting most likely a creature back out of this onto the battlefield, you're cheating on mana cost too. It could be something crazy. You know, an Avacyn or something, right? Mm-hmm it's kind of worth it to use like a 2CMC spell that just flickers Garuda 
you know, if you have a reasonably high chance of getting a good creature, yeah. any creature out you're, of it. You're really. playing this game so that you can get stuff out of your deck, most likely, because you want well, to you, know you can do it, right? And just the upside of, but sometimes my opponents are just going to flip something sweet, and sweet, I'll take yeah, that in that yeah. case. Yeah, like but you're big right. big monster deck or whatever. It, it, um, Garuda is a Kraken, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a bunch of cards, not a bunch, but there's a few cards that sort of refer to sea creatures. Yeah, you can make sea creature tribal with Thassa. Or just have these in the deck would still be good. Uh, Serpent of Yawning Depths is four blue blue for a six six enchantment creature serpent but it says krakens leviathans octopuses and serpents you control can't be blocked except by krakens leviathans octopuses and serpents because you know they're 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 in the ocean why can't merfolk block them though they seem like they would be under there why can't turtles block them (laughs) they're not turtly enough to block them (laughs) i know right are you not turtly enough for the turtle club uh well (laughs) whelming wave is a card i like to play a lot although in this case i think it would be kind of bad i would actually want to bounce garuda back to my hand yeah so you can play it again i can play it again yeah yeah yeah. yeah. you'd rather flicker it okay so let's talk about garuda is it worth it as a companion josh i think probably not that's a really 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 harsh restriction you get no three cmc rocks you get no five cmc cards there are so many good cards in those areas that are pretty important especially if you're trying to flicker make a lot of mana all that good stuff yeah i think it's probably decent in the 99 of decks or maybe even you could build a as a commander mm-hmm. to really you know the thassa deep dwellings the conjurer's closets and things like that because conjurer's closet you can't put in the deck if it's your companion right but if yeah. it's your commander you can and that yeah i, I just think you're gonna want you're gonna want some one drops right you can't have soul ring yeah, otherwise that's rough you know I, yeah so i like garuda as commander the most of the three options yeah maybe 99 is a close behind but you know you it, think the yeah, when we see it out there in the wild from this point forward or once the set comes out, you think we'll see it most often as a commander? or I don't think we'll see it at all, to be honest. But if we do see it, I think it'll most often be in commander slots. It reminds me of uh, Krim's uh, Thassa deck, which is yeah. all about flickering and blinking stuff over and over again. I think again. we could see it. I think we, some, we, we'll see a deck or two once in a while that has this. It's, it is powerful, right? Yeah. Like, it's cheating of mana costs. And so with once you get it out, like, two mana, maybe get, like, an eight, CMC thing onto the battlefield is powerful. And no. it, it's also like fun in a way that like Jacob's deck was fun in that you don't always know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. each game's going to be different with it. I, I think it'd be cool as Unfortunately, commander. Unfortunately, the Praetors, I think, are all odd mana costs. Are they? Yeah. I think evil things in the world of Magic are Well, Eldrazi generally costs. are, right? Yeah. 13s, 11s, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It that betrays, though, for some reason. It betrays the mana cost. It's <laughs> it even. betrays the mana cost. All right, let's move on to the next one, which I think is one of the better ones. Yeah, it, this reads Josh Lee Quiet over it, too. It's Gigantha, the Wellspring. Not Gigantha. It's not huge. It's Gigantha. <laughs> J- it's playing Jenga. Jenga the Wellspring. It's four and then a Gruul hybrid mana for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature elemental elk. Companion, no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. So Eternal Witness is out because it has two of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. However, yeah, it's it's only counting singular cards. It's not like you can only have one green sing- yeah, symbol yeah, in your yeah. whole deck. <laughs> yeah, but only one mana symbol of the same type on any given card Mm -hmm. Uh, you can tap gigantha to add wooberg white blue black red green this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana cost so you can use it to pay uh one of like a one in a green spell but you can use it to spend to pay for the green of a spell that last part is super weird i don't think we've ever seen anything about generic mana like that quite yeah usually we say generic mana to describe non uh colorless mana and we've seen like spend this mana only cast creature spells or whatever but not hey don't spend this to pay the generic mana cost yeah so i don't know it's hard to determine or evaluate how that part of it alters things however it doesn't say um it doesn't say you can't use that mana to to like activate abilities and stuff Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. you can't pay generic cost of abilities but so that opens up a lot of doors especially for sis a weather like captain which is two and a white for a two two legendary human soldier sis a gets plus one plus one for each color among other legendary permanents you control but you can pay wooberg this activates sis a so it's wooberg colon search your library for a legendary permanent card with converted mana cost less than sis a's power and put that card onto the battlefield then shuffle your library so gigantha counts as two colors by the way so sis a will get plus two plus two because it's gruel right gigantha is color identity is five color but color in game is gruel yeah uh horde of notions is a card you can just straight cast with gigantha for free and then you can also pay its man uh, its wooberg cost uh horde of notions by the way she's a five mana five five it, with cost vigilance wooberg. trample haste that costs wooberg activate ability wooberg you may play target elemental card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost okay That's pretty cool okay pretty cool pretty and, cool and, and again 
Giganta is an elemental, so yes. Horde of Notions could kind of help you keep that engine going. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. Horde of Notions, and again, that that works really well in Horde of Notions. That doesn't necessarily need to be your companion. You can put it into your actual deck, and it's a card that you'll be able to cast again with Giganta and using it. Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joda Archmage Eternal yep. also has Wooberg saying you may pay Wooberg rather than pay the mana cost for spells you cast. Pretty powerful. I mean, Should that's you? kind of, the, I think, the, the one most people thought of, right? Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, it's like, how am I going to cheat things out with Wooberg? Hey, how about a card that says I can pay Wooberg instead of a normal mana cost? How about a creature that just taps for that? Uh, untappers, really, really good with... Because this is a mana dork that taps for five mana. So mm -hmm. Kiora's Follower, Ofeto, Alchemist, Seeker of Skybreak, all of those uh, Thousand Year Elixir and those kind of things are all going to be really, really good because they now turn into things that essentially tap for five mana. So if your two drop taps for five mana, that's soul ring good. Yeah. And you can play Freed from the Real. Uh, or sorry, Pemmin's Aura, it's a three mana spell. No, Freed from the Real is Freed from the Real is the one, but uh, uh, Pemmin's Aura is one blue blue. So you'd be able to play that in your deck if it wasn't your companion. Because again, the blue blue is the double mana cost that uh, this Gigantha does not like. And if it is your companion, you can still play Freed from the Real. And either one will go infinite on mana with Gigantha because they allow you for one blue to untap Gigantha, which means you'll be floating the other four, four colors. Four colors, yep. Again, you can only spend that mana for colored stuff not for generic costs but still that's still a bunch of mana to spend yeah it's pretty good uh, uh jeskai ascendancy here we go here we go untap Untap it. creatures when uh, you play non-creature spells yeah if you have intruder alarm it's a card that's gonna every time you put something on the battlefield uh, and you have another mana dork and you put it with golos you're just gonna oh, go yeah. through your entire deck my friends golos has an activated ability is two in wooburgs you exile the top three cards of your library and then you may play those cards uh this turn without paying their mana cost so Again, that's something you can use the mana that you've made from Gigantha. Once you've got infinite mana, Golos basically lets you play mm -hmm. your entire deck. I'm going to put that in quotes just because of the generic mana cost on some things might make you have yeah. to jump through a few You want to have another mana yeah. dork out there. But either way, you're, you're going to find ways to go nuts with this card. Faber Elder, Bloom Tender, they tap for a lot of mana. Go with the Pemmin's Aura, freed from the real thing, and the, the untappers um, go in the decks that are just creating a lot of permanence of different colors. If you're playing Joda, Fist of Suns does the same thing, or if you want the Joda effect. So again, Gigantha here loves it. Yeah, Fist of Suns, just, yeah, you can play any spell now for one tap of Gigantha. Oh, I like this one. Yeah, so I found a card called Urza's Filter. It's four mana for an artifact. It says multicolored spells you cost cast up to two generic less to play. Huh. So now combine that with Gigantha and all of a sudden you'll be able to play most cards in your deck uh, with one tap of Gigantha. Legacy Weapon. Oh, seven boy. mana artifact legendary. You can pay Wooberg to remove target permanent from the game. Sweet. <laughs> I mean, if you have Cure's Follower and like a Go, Thousand Year oh. Elixir, you're just going to be like, boom, boom, boom. You know, exile those four things. And boom, 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 boom. And it's permanent, so lands, whatever. It's like you're going to win pretty fast. Oh, here's a Jimmy Wong favorite. Yeah, door to nothingness. Let's go. It's a five mana artifact enters the battlefield tapped, but you can pay uh, Wooberg twice. So white, white, blue, blue, black, black, green, green, red, red. Tap it, sacrifice door to nothingness. Target player loses the game. You just be like, you lose. You lose. Uh, yeah. Jimmy, you've been on the receiving and the, and deliver the, giving end, the yeah. delivery and receiving end of that thing. My favorite play of all time, potentially. <laughs> the most That might be the most Jimmy Wong thing I've ever done. It's interesting. Yeah. that Yeah, that probably was. It's interesting <laughs> that with me. Gigantha's, again, the, compa the companion restriction is no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. Mm -hmm. So things like Door to Nothingness could still go in it because that's in an activated ability, not yes. in the mana cost. Yes. But there's a whole bunch of new, like, ultimatums. Right. Now, those all have double pips of a lot of different colors. Sometimes triple. Yeah, so those could not go in the deck if Gigantha's your um, companion. companion. However, in a deck with Gigantha in it, ultimatums are sweet because it's going to basically reduce it by, you know, three mana every time. So, and again, with untappers and things, you, you can... You can do some cool stuff. And everybody wants to play the new ultimatum, so I wanted to mention them on this episode somewhere. <laughs> okay, so let's check it out in the three boxes we can put Gigantha in. Is it worth it as a companion? I think this could be. Yeah. I don't think it would be terribly hard to... Because, again, you can have generic costed, like, soul rings and stuff in your deck because those have no colored mana symbols. And then you could do a bunch of five-color stuff. And then, yeah, Eternal Witnesses 
counter spells like yeah still can you can have there. negates and stuff so mm-hmm. it's not like you can't you don't have any counter spells fierce guardianship and things like that can still yep. go in your deck um but pact of negation is out mana drains out counter spells out but still i think your deck can still function and be pretty good with just stuff that only has you know one of any given mana symbol on it so i think you could i, I believe we will see this in the companion zone sometimes yeah the companion zone how about uh, in the 99 i think it does great in the 99 just as a very easy to cast mana dork that you know you don't need to use red or green and four generic mana so you don't need to worry about some crazy casting cost in the five color deck um and taps for a ton of mana five mana is a lot there's going to be a, just a bunch of ways to abuse that i could see it in the com in the command zone too but i think that's probably the less likely of the three mm-hmm but I don't know if you feel the same way. Well, I mean, like, you just have better options at the five-color slot, right? Unless you always want to have the ability to be able to cast it and use that mana ability every turn. But I think five-color decks in general are running tons of rampant growth type effects just to make sure their mana is fixed. So I, I think this is a strong card and, and and probably the one of all the companions that we're the most likely to, to see broadly in, in, in the three different zones. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Let's go on to the next one, which is much more narrow. Yeah, thank goodness when he spends as much time talking about it. It's Kahira, the Orphan Guard. It's one and then green, white, green, white. So one green, green, one white, white, or one green, white for a 3-2 legendary creature cat beast companion. Each creature card in your starting deck is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast card. And then you can have Kahira off to the side. It's got Vigilance, and then it's a Lord for all of those creature types. Each other creature you control that's a Cat, Elemental, Nightmare, Dinosaur, or Beast gets plus one, plus one, and has Vigilance. I mean, there's not a ton to say here, obviously. Creature type, Tribal. These are weird creature types to be in the same deck together. Normally, you wouldn't have a Cat and a Dinosaur be a a similar tribe deck. But you don't need to, right? If it's all Cats, if Mm -hmm. it's only Cats, if it's an Erebo deck, then you can just not have elementals nightmares or dinosaurs or beasts either and it still would meet the criteria yeah uh but that does unfortunately mean that you can't <clears throat> run a birds of paradise right right you can't run a lot of other types of cards that you might want to run in the arable deck uh but maybe you don't need to uh maybe you can just run a crazy sort of s- synergistic deck like this Gishoth uh dinosaurs is a good one yep. that you know but even then you have like the otebek hunt master i think is what it's called which is a guy that helps you cast your dinosaurs for a little cheaper you can't good, run a lot really of those kinds of cards either so it's gonna be interesting i could see this being something that gets played somewhat often in these types of decks uh it's like not a very high upside i would say right like just giving most of your creatures plus one plus one like the value of that's not super super high and so i wouldn't really be willing to jump through many hoops to get that mm-hmm. so to me like yeah giving up on otopec Huntmaster is probably not even necessarily worth having Kahira in your command and your companion, your companion zone. zone yeah and then maybe you, play it in the 99 do you right. want a car yeah a creature card in your 99 that says you know anthem effect for your creatures or do you just want to put like trying for the hordes or something in you know yeah. what i mean like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. this one seems it's tough too lackluster. because it's like oh it's elementals maybe i'll play avenger of zendikar but it makes plant tokens yeah uh it's like maybe i'll play creator of behemoth it's a beast it's like yeah but it's just giving it plus one plus one you, you know so it, it seems a little underwhelming but it definitely seems really fun for all of you out there that do have a tribal deck in these colors it's definitely something to think about yeah it could maybe go in the arabo deck or if you just happen to look at your arabo deck and you go all my creatures are cats i literally don't have a not cat yeah then hey. you may as well just put it in the companions out. there you go yeah all right the next one is oh I guess we talked about whether we will see. I don't think it's it, you're going to ever see it as commander, right? No, I don't think so. Kahira, either. yeah. So maybe also in the green white. You lose out to so many colors that you'd want for dinosaurs. Like red's a huge part of a dinosaur deck. Yeah, so true. If, if you're trying to build like multi synergy tribal, maybe it's good and more fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd have to. Yeah, you, depending on you know what sort of kind of draw you have, you can multi synergy sort of tribal is not generally that great because like a lot of those are like name a creature type, play yeah. it, and then you're like, okay, well, I play one cat, then one beast, then one <laughs> dinosaur, and like one of them gets a bonus. Yeah, so you well, generally want to just though, stick to one thing. like this. Yeah, that's yeah. a good. Point. Eh, we'll see. All right, the next one is Karuga the Macro Sage. This is Karuga. Th- <laughs> Karuga. <laughs> this is three and then two hybrid Simic. So three green, green, three blue, blue, or three green, blue. Five mana total for a five four legendary dinosaur hippo. It has companion, which says your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana cost three or greater and lands. So nothing in your deck is two CMC or less. Huh. Um, Besides the lands. And then it says, when Karuga enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost. You guessed it, three or greater. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. If and Now, again, you're you're 
getting rid of Soul Ring if you decide to play this as commander. You're getting rid of all your two mana rocks and Rampant Gross and Far Seeks and Birds yeah. of Paradise and Land Royal. This there. seems like a really good card in the 99. However, play it. You already have a big board. Maybe five mana draw, three cards. Flicker it a couple of times. Go nuts. The, I think the huge problem with running Karuga as companion is that in the decks that have all big spells, mm -hmm. the thing you want to do the most is get a lot of mana on the table, which is ramp early. Right. And this says, no, sorry, you can't ramp until turn three. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you're going to be even slower to cast your really huge spells. So I mean, you would think commander is the format, right? Where it's okay to only run three CMC and up, but... You really don't want to do nothing. You want to do cool stuff to play the three CMC and stuff up faster. So. Yeah, so I don't see this being run as... Comp or being good as companion at all. Yeah, I could see this, however, being good in an Animar deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Potentially, you cast it for just uh, blue, green, blue, green, and then boom, you're drawing a bunch of cards because Animar tends to spit out a lot of creatures on the battlefield. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Maelstrom Wander. Oh, yeah. Is get, another get one you might think that. about. It's eight mana and it it uh, cascades twice and gives creature use control haste. So you usually want like big things in the deck so that they're going to come out, have haste, start swinging. Yeah, I, I really don't think this is great as companion. I can see this much more likely in the 99 and I don't think we'll ever really see this as commander. Yeah, it just... It's a five mana do nothing Simic commander. You could run well, any number of Simic commanders that at least get you to play Karuga faster and then do cool well, things. Well, as commander, you could play all the rampant stuff. So I think that's actually right. more likely than companion. I don't think we're going to see it. Yeah, I, I think as companion, you're right. It's almost never going to happen uh, unless you are a madman and you do something crazy that you're constantly working and doing something in the first few turns. But what can know. you do? Maybe put some cycling cards or something in so it just gives you something yeah, to do? Yeah, I there don't you know. go. Yeah, I just never want to just be like... Like, I'm not going to play anything every game until turn three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next one, maybe the most powerful. It's definitely got the biggest splash and is being talked about the most. It's Luris of the Dream Den. So it's one Orzhov Orzhov. So one white, white, one black, black, or one white, black for a 3-2 legendary creature cat nightmare. Companion, each permanent card in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> It's the opposite of Karuga. It's the opposite of Karuga. Notably, Luris is a three CMC card, so this has to be a companion if you want to... Uh, well, the companion only that. matters. Only you, matters, yeah, right. Yeah yeah, 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 So you can't have Luris as your, like, commander and, and still have the companion. No, yeah, you can. You can have it as your commander, right, right. But the, the companion cost is... I think this is for standard, so you don't put it in your deck as well as outside of it. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. it's a three for CMC. For us, it doesn't matter. For us, it doesn't matter. We can never have yeah. two of them, yeah. It's a three-two with lifelink, and more importantly, it says, during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. Each of your turns. You still have to pay the mana. Yeah. But on each of your turns, you just get... One thing for free back. Not for free. One thing back without having to do anything but just have Luris on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, this companion restriction... Is stringent, but inherently more powerful than Karuga because the problem with only big stuff is you have a lot of tendency to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Whereas Luris, you're going to always do the stuff, right? They're all little stuff, but you'll get to do it. And some of the more powerful cards in Magic are the low CMC things. So just playing ones and two drops, I you could definitely make this deck. I, I think it could work. Now you'd miss out on having, you know, a lot of those decks want to play like ad nauseum or something to take advantage of the fact. Well, you can, so it's each permanent card, right? Oh, so, yeah, you're right. So it's just more the big creatures and the big rocks. Oh, it's permanent. I didn't even yeah, read that. enchantments, planeswalkers, those are the sort of things that Luris is unfortunately oh, you could still not. play ad nauseum in this deck is what you're telling me? Yeah, you can. Holy crap. That's pretty good because now all of a sudden the fact that everything's low CMC is working for you. Yeah. The only thing is, though, the only commanders you have to choose from in the colors are Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim, who's a 2CMC commander, and Karlov of the Ghost Council, which is also 2CMC uh, I didn't even think about that because you can't run it in like a 3CMC, or sorry, a 3 color because that would naturally cost 3CMC. Yeah. Is there any that's like one of one color and then I a looked. hybrid of two other colors? It is not there. <laughs> so you can only... Asking for two CMC commanders in general is going to be a tough bet because it's just so powerful to with their super low CMC. Uh, so they don't have any three color low CMC commanders like that. The closest you'll get is three colors with like Najila right, or those sorts of colors that have CMC, the yeah. five colors in the text box, but those are three CMC. Right, because yeah. your commander has to obey the companion restrictions. So that's got a lot harder i wanted to play croxa with luris which would be nuts it's a card that you just keep casting after it escapes uh, every time and, so good yeah but 
Because yeah. you want to discard things too. Yeah. <laughs> and then you want to play things out of your graveyard. Oh, that would have been sweet. Yeah, but there are a lot of different things you can do with this card uh, if you play a Pack Rat deck. So Pack Rat is a one in the black card that it's equal, power and toughness are equal to the number of rats you control and you can pay two in the black to discard a card and you create a token that's a copy of Pack Rat. So this is a card that just keeps cycling and going more and more and more. You keep making more Pack Rats to keep being bigger and bigger. It's also two mana. And then you have Rat Colony which you can play any number of cards in your deck that are Rat Colony. So maybe you could make a Luris Rat Colony type deck. Actually, that's that's good because those decks, a Rat Colony deck, again, you can have any number of Rat Colonies in your deck. It says that mm -hmm. on the card, like Shadowborn and Apostles. Those usually have like 30 of that card in the deck. So you're yeah. already, you know, half the way there to meeting Lur Luris's restriction. Yeah, with Ailey, you can also sacrifice your Rat Packs, your pa Pack Rats that are huge and then do a ton of, you know... Do a lot of good stuff there. And also, don't don't forget, Luris could be your commander, in which case, like, if most of your deck... or You don't need all of your deck to be 2CMC at that point either. Yeah. Like, you can just have key pieces like Rat Colonies and stuff. Yeah. Piper of the Swarm is another rat tribal... Uh, <laughs> it grants piece. our favorite keyword, Menace, to yep. all your rats. And it makes rats. Yep. Let's you sack um, them. Yeah, this card reminds me a lot of Silas Wren, Luris. Uh, but, but Silas Wren's way harder to trigger. You have to attack someone, deal combat damage, and then you choose an artifact to recast. So you can choose, obviously, big stuff, but that's a lot. Luris just being on the battlefield lets you cast something, which is pretty important. Pretty important. So we wanted to talk quickly here about the rules surrounding X cards. Here's the thing, I think, if Luris is your companion and everything needs to be 2 CMC or less, you probably actually want a bunch of X cards in the deck because that gives you big things to do. Mm -hmm. So anything that's like, what is it, like Endless Ones? Yep. Is X mana for an XX? Walking Ballista, XX for a card that pings. Yeah, so those are technically zero CMC when they're in your deck, mm -hmm. but you could spend more mana on them to sort of fill out your curve or be able to do big, powerful things. Exsanguinate can go in this deck. All That's not a permanent, so it could have anyway. Right, right. Uh, but there's interesting rules with playing X spells out of the graveyard. Do you want to explain that? Yeah, so this is the Squee loophole. There's a card called Squee the Immortal that says you may cast Squee the Immortal from your graveyard or from exile. And there was a whole rules curve fluffle that sort of happened with a card called Ixalan's Binding because Squee originally was able to escape from under Ixalan's Binding. Uh, and I believe that they changed it so that now when you're proposing to cast a spell, you're casting it and announcing the amount for X simultaneously. So that means that if you have an endless one that goes to your graveyard and you have Luris out, it technically is a CMC card with less than two, but you cannot cast it out of your graveyard for larger than that, which is weird because, again, Luris says you may cast... Um, you may cast one permanent card with CMC, two or less from your graveyard. However, when you cast an endless one and say X is equal to three, it becomes a three CMC card at the moment of casting it. Which because means you couldn't have cast you it. You couldn't have cast it, but you can still do it for two. So you can, again, you know, play that endless one for a bunch, it dies, and then you get to recast it, yes, with Luris, but you can only cast it for X is equal to two at the max. Yeah, that's really weird. So Stone, Stone Coil, Serpent, Endless One, Walking Ballista, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, like if you had somehow had Hydroid Crasis in this, you could... Only do X is equal to zero. Yeah, so it just die immediately yeah. if you recast it. Hard to get it into those colors, but <laughs> yeah, interesting. But there are a lot of really interesting cards I think you can put in this deck that just makes you just cycle and gives you tons of synergy. It feels like a modern, feels like a legacy type build. Mishra's Bobble is a zero cost artifact. Oh, that's a sweet one. You tap it, sack it, look at the top player card of a target player's library, and then you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. But you get to do this once turn. If you it's have your, flash speed yeah. in your deck, holy moly. Well, it's only on once on your turns for Luris, I believe. Yeah, but but you know you can again. Let's say Luris is your commander. You have Vidalk and Orri out. You sack Mishra's Bobble next turn. You can flash out your graveyard. Yeah. Play it, sack it, draw another card. I mean, you don't have to flash it. It's your turn, so you can just do it. Right, right. When someone else's turn, you can just get out of your graveyard again with Luris, right? Is each no, of your turns? No, it's one time on each of your turns. My so, bad. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, yeah. But I but still zero draw card is great. So just being able to do that every turn when you need cards and right. then switching to other things. Now Spellbomb you have on here, which is one mana for an artifact. You tap and sack it and then exile all cards from target player's graveyard. And then when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you can pay black. And if you do, you draw a card. So you do that. Then if you're doing that every turn, you're exiling all the graveyards, which turns a lot of decks just completely off and mm -hmm. then still drawing cards, which is yeah. great. Golgari Thug is a really great option. For one in a black, you can play a card that says Dredge 4 on it. And then mm -hmm. when it dies, you put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library so you could also redraw maybe that endless one and play it for more now yeah the walking ballista goes on top of your graveyard that's yeah. great 
Perpetual Timepiece is another one. It's two mana for an artifact. You tap it, mill yourself for two, and then you can pay to exile it uh, and shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard into your library. This just fills up your graveyard so you can cast the... You want m- more options of stuff to cast with Lurus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nim Death Mantle, again, a, 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 an equipment that's going to be really good here. Lotus Petal, a zero mana artifact that you can play twice on your turn. Uh, lots to go here. If you can afford Lion's Eye Diamond, obviously it's very, very good. <laughs> I think that's how the Legacy and the Vintage decks yes. are trying to break Luris. Vin- vintage like is for sure because, yeah, you put it out, discard your hand, it casts Luris, mm-hmm. and it goes to your graveyard, the Lion's Eye Diamond, and now you can either play Lion's Eye Diamond again to get more mana out of your graveyard for free. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. That Lion's Eye... Always going to Spoiler alert, busted. <laughs> busted. Don't make proxies out of it when you're a kid. Now, if you're not playing this in the 99, it opens up so many more possibilities. Or as a companion, it opens up a lot more possibilities. You mean if here. you are playing it? Are the playing it, yeah. Not as Or companion. as a commander, yeah. Commander, yeah, yeah. So there's lots of stuff you can do. There's actually a really interesting cycle you can do here where there are a lot of permanents that are one, two CMC, like Angelic Renewal or uh, Animate Dead, which is... Cards that basically help get cards out of your graveyard. Um, Angelic Renewal says, whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may sacrifice Angelic Renewal if you do return that card to the battlefield. Well, you can play that card again next turn because it's two CMC spell permanent with Luris out, so you can kind of cycle a lot of really powerful cards like a Grave Titan or a a Gary, you know, the Grave Merchant of Gray Merchant of Asphodel. So there's a lot of different ways there too where you know you get, get your so much guide, value. Your keep Revelar coming back. over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about the companion restriction either. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so here's the big question with Luris, I suppose, since we're sort of looking back at all these companions and saying, you know, do we think they're worth it as companions? We think we're only going to see them as commanders, or mm-hmm. they're only going to go in the 99. How, what do you think about this one? I think this is the most powerful um, just because of historically having low CMC spells means that you're playing closer to the legacy formats and those have the most powerful decks of all time. And I, you pointed this out. I didn't even realize it. It says each permanent card in your starting deck has mm-hmm. converted mana cost two or less. So you can play non-permanent cards that are above that restriction, which is a really huge deal. Black and white, best removal spells in the game. Utter end. You can play those cards in Luris. Yeah, it's, you can just find ways to fill out. Because what you would be worried is like later in the game, I'm not doing powerful enough things. Mm-hmm. But between X spells... And high CMC spells, Torment of Hailfires, and then, well, that's an X spell. Uh, yeah. You know, high s- spells that, you know, instant sorceries go, that can scale that, with the game. Yeah, cost seven, eight mana. You can have a couple of those. So you can have game enders, winners. So yeah, this, this feels realistic to have as your companion. Could also be a commander in the rat decks and things like that. Mm-hmm. And definitely in the 99 of, of decks that have a lot of low CMC permanence. Because I think this card is best, though, honestly, in the 99 or more so as your commander. Because yeah. I think building around this, and you want to be able to recast Luris this seems like one of those remove it very quickly type targets and look if you're playing it as your companion it comes in and dies or gets exiled you never see it again and then all your wonderful deck building restrictions look pretty silly yeah that's something we talked about in the mechanics episode but we haven't gone over here yet i think there's going to be a danger for commander players to treat to jump through the hoops to meet the restriction and play a companion and then in their mind think of it similar to their commander right and then it'll get exiled once and they'll realize oh I don't have infinite access to that card like I do my commander. I build my entire deck around this thing that mm-hmm. can be exiled and I can never get it back. So be careful. Yeah. Be I think I think that's careful. definitely going to happen to a lot of deck builders and they're going to realize, oh, man, it's probably not worth all the hoops because <laughs> then yeah. somebody goes Path to Exile and you go, oh, crap, now my whole deck doesn't work and it, no, it will not for this See game. See Daisy. Yeah. yeah. So I think most best as commander, pretty good in the 99 and try to not get blown out by having that as your companion. I mean, I think you could have it as your companion, but you, the deck has to like not work rely without on it. it. Yeah, but, yeah, totally. All right, the next one is Lutri, the Spell Chaser. All right, this the is next the one card. That, is- <laughs> yeah, this is the one that got banned. I, we're not going to spend any time on it. This card is not legal in Commander, so we're not going to waste any brain power. The next one I think is my favorite of the bunch. Ah, Obosh, the Prey Piercer. Yes, it's Obosh, the Prey Piercer. So this is three and then two hybrid Rakdos. So three red, red, three black, black, or three red, black. Five mana total for a three, five legendary Hellion Horror companion. Your starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs and land cards. Hmm. So the inverse of Garuda. And it says, if a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player 
instead. I do love doubling of damage effects, and Abash is just saying that only for odd CMC cost permanence. Or right. sources, sorry. Not sources, yeah, it doesn't have to be a permanent. So uh, you put this on the list, which is one of my you know favorite cards. This is the kind of card that I hate to play against. It's Kervik the Merciless, five, a black and a red, a five, four, legendary creature, human shaman. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, Kervik deals damage to any target equal to that spell's converted mana cost. Any target it can go face, and it's going to do double. Yeah, that's so much damage. It's Who cares if it's seven mana? Once this is out, even a removal spell is just going to whap someone in the face. <laughs> yeah, if you land Caravex so often, the whole table's like, oh, crap. Uh, and this game, just the time, someone yeah. like turned the kitchen timer, <laughs> like this game's not going to last five minutes, <laughs> yeah. go. If you get kill it right away, then Caravex is going to take over, and now even more so. Vile Smasher, you wrote oh. this down. This is really good, too. This is your favorite. Yeah. One, a black, and a red for a 2-3. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, Vile Smasher deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to an opponent chosen at random. This is awesome because it deals double that damage. It's brutal. <laughs> so brutal. It just, that's, this is the kind of thing that spirals out of control. People look at the boss and go like, oh, how many odd CMC cards deal? Oh my goodness. <laughs> the next one is probably the meanest though. Yeah, it's Heartless Hit at Sugu. Three red, red, legendary creature, Ogre Shaman. Four, three. You tap it and it deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total rounded down. They just die. die. <laughs> I think you have to set your life total to, to be, be an, even. An, an odd. Odd, right? yeah. So that you rounds don't, down. Yeah, rounds you down. You go to yeah. one. But anyone that even, they just immediately ices them out of the game. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, hey, okay. I like this one too. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought that this was like, that's for companions. I guess that mm -hmm. was all that stuff wasn't necessarily for companion. But I was thinking like, just as a commander, I really like this as a burn commander. Yeah, totally. So there's a bunch of cards that are all odd CMC, like Blasphemous Act is really, really good, does 26 to everything. Chandra's Ignition, oh, actually God. Chandra's Ignition makes the car, the creature do the damage. So anyway, still, you put it, you do it on an odd CMC creature, it's going to double it. have in your deck, right? Tainted Strike is an odd CMC card, so give it um, Poison. Torbran is even, but it could go in the deck if uh, Obosh is... The commander, commander right? right you're not using it as a companion all of a sudden you're adding to damage and doubling all that depending on where it's coming from yeah that, that's just endless damage towards people rampaging for i love this card it's take a damage yeah now, take. It's, now it's take two damage <laughs> so anytime anybody plays a creature they'd now take two from rampaging for Jeez. even cards like risk factor so this is two in a red for an instant target opponent may have risk factor deal four damage to them that's eight damage with obosh out but if they don't you draw three cards. And then you can jumpstart this from your graveyard as many times as you would like to. So every no, single no, exi time. No, it exiles. Oh, it exiles. Sorry. It. You yeah. jumpstart it once, but that's another eight damage. That's 16 off of a six CMC. And a deck like this that's just like Rampaging Frostons out and other things are going on, they're not going to have the life to pay. So it's three mana, draw three a lot of times, and then do that again with jumpstart one more time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like Obosh a lot. I think this might be the burn commander that, you know some of us have been waiting for fork spells are also really good right because they copy the original the spell original, so they yeah. have the cmc of the original spell right mm -hmm. is that so correct gonna, yeah i believe so it becomes a copy of that spell yeah just like a clone or something in so. like mtgo it turns into a copy of the spell i think when it looks like it so yeah x spells because you can an x choose spell. an x to be odd yeah yeah so like earthquake or something you just do it for 11 it's gonna be <laughs> 22 like i i really like obash a lot i think this will be i might build this deck as my like hey we need a fast game deck it's gonna i have one too it's mono red right yep. same same idea and the heb kind of likes this card a lot it it just wants to deal a ton of damage yeah, and, and if it it's will. your commander, you still can have some even CMC stuff in there yeah. to make it run. You can have the Torbrands and stuff, but you're just, you know, most of your important cards that are going to deal a lot of damage. Well, that's a good segue. It's Rakdos, so they're yep. not great at ramping. Is it worth it as companion? Yeah, see, I think that the biggest thing that makes it no is that you can't play two mana rocks if it's your companion. Yeah. And you're not in green, so you really need your Signets and your Talisman and your Arcane Signet, and you need your two mana rocks pretty badly. You need a lot of mana in yeah. these colors in general because you're not going to get it through a land ramp. So I think there's just no way this is worth it as companion. But as commander, I like it quite a bit. And in the 99, less so because it can't go in the Yenit deck. Yeah. So there's just less likely to be a deck that's just naturally built around odd CMC stuff. Yep. So you really wouldn't want to build around that. But I think maybe of the companions as commanders, this is my favorite.
Wow. Black Red. You've been on the Black Red kick recently. Grevin, I like my Grevin deck a lot yeah, too. Exactly. I'm turning into you and you're playing more blue and green. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I, the, value. <laughs> the value. It's been calling to me. It's been whispering to me for years. <laughs> it's like, come on, Jimmy. Remember when you won with Green Blue on Game Nights? Nice, nice, nice. I'm like, Kenan, yeah, I do. Kenan is really good. Yeah, oh, gosh. <laughs> I have so many options. With Red, I can only choose between two or three things. <laughs> All right, this next one's going to be a quick one. Yeah, Umori the Collector. It's two and then Golgari, Golgari. So two black, black, two green, green, or two black, green for a four or five legendary creature ooze. Companion, each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. So Each non-land card, like uh, your artifacts and crap have to have? Why yes. does it say creature? Well, I, I don't know. So you can only run all artifacts, only run all creatures, or only run all enchantments. Right? Oh, I was thinking type like tribe oh yeah oh, no, no this they have is to be all, all artifacts all creatures yeah. all planeswalkers you're not gonna do yeah oh, when gotcha. it enters the battlefield you choose a card type so it could be creature artifact whatever it is and then spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast so it doesn't need to be a creature this acts like cloud key so cloud key is an mm-hmm. artifact that is three mana when it enters the battlefield choose artifact creature enchantment instant or sorcery spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast um you could also have umari you know be planeswalkers but you this is not you won't you won't be able to build that deck there's not yeah. that there's not uh, 67 you're gonna have all lands and <laughs> all like 15 lands planeswalkers and, yeah <laughs> you don't want to have this as companion it's not going to be a good look for you i mean artifacts that's the only one i think you could pull off yes and if you you maybe had an affinity based deck or something because you have artifact creatures i believe that counts because there's artifacts decks still. that are like all artifacts i've seen yeah. those but yeah. i've never seen a deck that's literally a hundred percent no there's nikia decks and stuff that are like 100% creatures or yeah. like 95% creatures. I think you play this in the 99 for creature-based decks or decks that want to ramp out like a Prosh, Sky Raider of Care a little faster. Um, you know, yeah. you know Reese the Exiled Slimefoot, the Stowaway has a lot of creatures in there. It's like a Sapperling tribal deck. They're really... this Carador. Card is, yeah, Carador, tons of creatures. Marin, well. uh, Yarrick. Yeah. Maybe. I'm not very stoked about it. But it's in green. In general. If this wasn't green, it'd be way better, right? Because green already is going to be able to get ramp in other ways. Green mm-hmm. is not as worried with like, can I be explosive with my, and, and have enough mana to do a lot. But let's say this was like if this was Rakdos. Red. Yeah, or Rakdos even. Yeah, then all of a sudden you'd look at it a lot more closely because now I'm getting some advantage I couldn't get in another way. Whereas green can just play ramp and gross and stuff and pretty yeah. much, yeah. This card belongs in the 99. This card belongs in a museum. <laughs> this card belongs in a museum. Yeah. That's Lutri. <laughs> Do you think it's worth it? <laughs> yeah. Do you it's think definitely it? Lutri. So it's not worth it as a companion, we don't think. Nah, definitely we not. We don't think we're going to see it. We just don't think we're going to see it much, do we? No, I think, again, it's going to be very specific. And why not just run Cloud Key? Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's less... If anything, we'll see it in the 99, but probably not as commander. Maybe on an artifact-based deck that wants to be wants Golgari. To all creatures ooze you know w- you know ramp out your ooze cards your but even then you want less. ramp it grows and cultivates and yeah. like you well want you can do that if it is your commander but again you oh know, yeah that's being two colors i think is what sets it back a little bit here yeah yeah that's true oh yeah i was only thinking of it as a companion yeah, yeah. but it is good for reducing mana costs across the board there are lots of things that kind of do that in the history of magic though so i wouldn't jump through too many hoops to make umari work for yourself all right let's talk about the next one there's a little confusion around this card. It's Yorian Sky Nomad. Three and two Azorius. So three white, white, three blue, blue, or three blue, white. Five mana for a four, five bird serpent companion. Your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. We'll get to that in a second. It has flying and says when Yorian enters the battlefield, exile any number of target or sorry, any number of other non-land permanents you own and control, Mm. and then return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. Let's address the companion thing. It says if your deck has more than 20 cards, uh, more than the minimum deck size, then it can be your companion. That cannot be done in Commander, because it doesn't allow you to play more cards it just says if you do yeah the rules for commander say your deck has to be 100 cards so we have a maximum deck size in commander yeah so yorian just will never be a commander or sorry a companion companion in commander can still be your commander can still be into the 99 so that's what we'll talk about it is a massive blink spell for however many of your non-land permanents that you own and control that you want and there's a battlefield blinks you know, your whole board that's not lands if you want. Uh, Brago is the type of shell that this is looking to be in. You can basically flicker your entire board every single turn thanks to Yorian because it's going to keep entering the battlefield. You flicker other stuff. Brago comes back, flickers that. You know, the big thing you usually yeah, do with yeah. that kind of thing is flicker your mana rocks because you tap them, but when they blink out and come back, they're untapped. Yep. 
Now, Yorin brings them back at your end step, so it's hard to totally break it. Yeah, but you have activated abilities. Yeah. You have something to use the mana on generally or hold up a counterspell or something like that. Somebody brought up the Felidar Guardian, basically, and this makes it so that you you just are untouchable at sorcery speed. Yeah, you just, everything just goes away and comes back, goes away, comes back, goes away, comes back. Yeah, because Felidar Guardian is three and a white for a 1-4, but it when it enters the battlefield, you may exile another target permanent you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control right then. You don't do that at the end step. Yeah, so instant you, speed flickering. Very yeah, important. so Yorian comes in, flickers the Guardian on your end step, because Yorian's on your end step, the Guardian comes in, then it flickers Yorian, which comes back immediately, flickers Felidar Guardian out. And then next and, and everything else you've got, except for... Right. Yeah, and then next end step, Felidar Guardian comes back in, flickers Yorian out in, boom, your whole board's basically gone on everybody else's turn. <laughs> it's like <laughs> mini <laughs> Teferi's protection. Could be bad, because you don't have any blockers, really, but, <laughs> you know, could also mean mean that, like, they Look, can't, they can't mess with your stuff. if you're just getting a Mole Drifter back every single end step, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. And <laughs> yeah. there's, again, the Brago decks I've played against are extremely powerful, and just adding another two into that toolbox it seems pretty good for that that whole archetype flicker wisp does the same thing um dead, dead eye navigator. navigator yeah duh. oh Haven't two mana to blink your whole board huh that seems good mm, seems pretty good uh thassa deep dwelling conjurer's closet all the normal blink stuff panharmonicon's probably going in the deck that's doing this not because it works with yorian just because mm -hmm. it works with the cards yorian is good with okay so 99 or commander for this card i think this is a 99 through and through yeah i doubt you're building this as your commander because brago's just better yeah I think so. Cheaper, gets going faster. Um, and instant speed flicker as well, which is very yeah. important. I, I don't even think Yorin's super great. I don't know that I'm even putting it in my in my uh, rune deck because yeah. if you want to flicker multiple permanents, like more than two, then you're probably already in really good shape because you got a good board setup. Yeah. 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 And there's so many ways to just do that state where you're constantly flickering your whole board and bringing it back. All right. I had a lot of people message me about this next one. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about this too. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Two Boros cards that in this set that make me go, hey, not bad. I guess not bad if that's where I'm at. It's not great either. <laughs> <laughs> not bad hey this piece of poop smells better than the last one is it still a piece of poop eh, maybe I, I think this one's better than a piece of poop yeah yeah it, this is a it's also beautiful look at it it's a fox okay this is one boros boros so one red red or one red white or one white white legendary creature elemental fox 3-3 three, three, with companion each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability so that's so something that permanent needs to be able to tap and yeah. do something or they don't even, have, have, to say, they don't even have to say not land activate. because lands tap and do stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, abilities that you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate, and this effect can't reduce the mana that costs us to less than one mana. And for one mana, and you can tap the fox, target creature can't block this turn. That last one's like, they were like, well, crap, well, we can't have this card and it doesn't do have an nothing, activated ability, yeah. so what's the, the worst thing we could give it because it doesn't matter? I wish you could ping it, give it the pinger ability. That would have been be sweet, better, but yeah. way too good. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's rewind to something because I stepped on you. Yes, activated abilities are not only tap abilities. Yes. It could be like Thrasios. That's an activated ability, right? Mm -hmm. Pay four, colon, do something. Uh, loyalty abilities on planeswalker, Planeswalkers are activated, activated abilities. abilities. So straight up, do not play this as your companion, I don't think. I it, don't know. It, We're going to argue about that later. Every single card in your deck, we'll I don't find think out. it's as hard as you think. I True. thought I originally answered that to people like I don't know, and then as I started counting like how many cards in you, my like, go Tim deck, deck, yeah, I went through my Tim deck, which is like pretty close. Obviously, it doesn't have the right colors, but I was just seeing like how likely it's only thirteen cards in the whole deck that don't have activated abilities. Could you get rid of them? They are some of the best cards. It's like <laughs> Seaborn like Breaker, right? Yeah. Seaborn Muse, Will Breaker, Anger would have to go. But I'm not. I'm just saying it's not crazy. Like I already ha am like. 13 out of, say, 65 is... Yeah, that's less than you might have expected, right? A lot less. I thought there'd be more than 20. Because so if I was going to say, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm guessing at least half my deck doesn't have activated abilities. Yeah, I, I just think you wouldn't have to cut too many corners to make this work. I'm not saying you would necessarily want to do it, but it's not right. crazy. Okay, sorry. Let's go into the uh, combo synergistic stuff because there's a lot. Yeah, I think this would be pretty good in a Brea deck, which is already running red and white. It makes her ability cost one, uh, and she wants to be able to pay this a lot to sack artifacts and do stuff. Really good in Ken. Kenrith. Really good in Kenrith. Because it works with the, almost all his abilities. Maybe the Kenrith deck is the one that this that's right. companion has then, huh? That's what I think. I'm thinking about, I'm not saying I'm going to do it, so don't quote me on it, okay. but I'm thinking about converting the Tim deck to a Kenrith deck with Zerda as companion and just, do I want to lose Seedborn Mew's Willbreaker, Anger, and a few of the really, really good cards? I'm not sure, but right. that would be what I think the best way to go. Yeah, yeah. Because you'd, yeah, you'd, you'd get some stuff because you get white and white does have some things you want. So. Well, interestingly, this says abilities that you ca activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. So that means you can use your Basalt Grim Monoliths to untap them for cheaper. Yeah. You're not going to tap for more 
but they're going to untap for way cheaper. Right. So Basalt Monolith is a three-mana artifact that doesn't untap during your untap step, but you can pay three mana, or sorry, you, you can tap it for three mana. Mm-hmm. And then as a separate ability, you can pay three and untap it. So now Zerda says you can pay one to untap the Basalt Monolith, Ooh. which means you can tap it for three and then untap pay one of one. that to untap it. So you're floating two. So Basalt Monolith and Grim Monolith does basically the same thing, even though the costs are slightly different. It still works. You go infinite on mana immediately with Zerda and either Basalt or Grim Monolith. So you That's have powerful. an infinite mana combo piece in your companion zone that you can basically start the game with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because Zerda says only the permanent cards in your deck have to have activated abilities, you can still run the fabricates and the other things that oh, go fine. Oh, okay. The words so of invention in and that stuff. Case. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that right there is just crazy because you can just pretty easily infinite mana. Yeah, that's actually really true. Soulbright Flamekin, a one in a red, you can pay two to give a creature trample, and then if it's the third time you've activated that ability, you add eight red mana to your mana pool. So typically it's pay oh, six, so get you... eight, but it's going to pay three to get eight. So even the turn you cast it, that's just five mana, get eight. Yeah, so if you if you if if it's already in play, then it costs less, but if it if you play it that turn and do it, it's still pretty cheap. You still come out mana positive, I think. That's pretty cool. Um, Cloudstone Curio and the two drop, you can basically just keep recasting it infinitely thanks to the ability. Oh, right because you come out with three left and then yeah after you replay it yeah okay so you're just gaining there's tons of ways to get infinite mana here obviously this is staff of domination this is the type deck. best card in the deck right if, <laughs> if you got zerda in your command zone or companion zone the best card in the deck is probably staff of domination besides the the monoliths yeah it's three mana for an artifact and it has five abilities one to untap the staff of domination remember zerda can't reduce the cost of an activated ability below one so you'll always have to pay one to untap it then it's two mana, tap it to gain a life. That's one mana with Zerta. Three mana, tap it to untap target creature. So that's one mana with Zerta. Four mana, tap it to tap target creature. Two, two mana, mana with Zerta. And then five mana, tap it, draw a card. That's three mana with Zerta. Because it can untap itself. If you ever go infinite on mana, you draw your entire deck with Staff of Domination. Yeah, you have a Metal Worker. It taps, you reveal two artifacts. So you have four mana, and then you're going to untap it for three mana. You get an extra mana to un- You can float, retap, get infinite mana, draw your whole deck. Yep. Um, it's it's nasty. This, this card is crazy. I, I, you can also, um, you know, I think Kenrith is my favorite, or Brea in terms of playing this as your companion. Uh, yeah, to me, Kenrith, for sure. Braille, just, like, you have so many artifacts and gives that you access do things to already. Green and blue, right? So. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, Sunforger, because equipment, yes. all equipment has an activated ability of equip. And Sunforger also has an activated ability to unequip it and go tutor for an instant or sorcery yeah. in your deck, which your instants and sorceries don't need activated abilities, like we said. Ooh. So all of a sudden, one to equip, two to, two to unattach. Yeah, usually the three to equip is what makes Sunforger balanced <laughs> it's still right? like the most broken boros card right I yeah think it's like the best card in the colors it feels and, like the skull clamp of boros yeah and all of a sudden you just made it like way more efficient almost half price like it w- than it was before yeah yeah taking something on the clip cost from three to one is big game so uh so thrasios costs two now to activate urza costs three, three. now to activate Ooh. and those are cards that i think could go in if you're doing the basalt grim monolith thing or even if you're not because I don't have infinite mana combos in my Vile Smasher Thrasios deck. Mm-hmm. I didn't build it that way. But Thrasios is still amazing in the deck because just being able to funnel your extra mana into advantage, like putting cards into your hand or lands into play, is so, so powerful. So even if you're not going infinite mana, Thrasios and Urza just seem great because they have okay. activated okay. abilities. You convinced me, Josh. It works as companion. In fact, it may be really powerful as companion. Yeah, I, I think it's really, really good. Um, and then it's just a training grounds if it's in your 99. And training yeah. grounds and Biomancer Familiar are so just good. cards that see a ton of play. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think like if you're in these colors, or you, I'm even talking about stretching into that color because right now I'm teamer. Mm-hmm. And if I stretch into five color, then I can play it just to get that effect. And, and, and it might be the right thing to do. I, I like this card quite a bit. So obviously I think it's worth it as companion. We're probably going to see it the most in the 99, like as a training grounds is my guess. But what do you think? I mean, red, white has never sort of had this mana reduction available to them. In a way, it's ramp, right? So this is, uh, I think, addressing the problem in a interesting, unique way. And the companion thing is just a cherry on top. Yep. If you can make that work, then kudos. Good job. All right. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're going to do our normal thing at the end here, which is we're going to, we've got three categories because there's companions now. Okay, so we're going to talk about which we think is the best new companion when played as a companion. Mm-hmm. 
I uh, I can lo- I, I can narrow it down for you here. I think I think I know what it's going to be on our list. I think I know what mine is for this category for sure. So best new companion as it played by companion. I'm go- uh, nominees here. I think Luris. The nominees are Gigantha and Zerda are my yep. top three as companions. Yeah, I think Luris is going to have the biggest effect in formats outside the commander, and maybe Zerda is going to have a bigger effect inside commander, just because again Boros has not had access to this type of thing before. Yeah, it's really hard for me to tell which of these is the best. I'm going to go with Luris for myself. Uh, I just think... As companion. Yeah, it's being able to cast something out of your graveyard instead of having ability cards that are have activated abilities on them. I think you're just going to have way more things to cast out of your graveyard. I also think, like, I didn't even read the card correctly. So the fact that it was, <laughs> the fact that it was on the list for me and I didn't even read the part where it only really needs to ad- abide by the 2CMC thing yeah. if it's a uh, permanent. So now the fact that you can have spells that are instants and sorceries that go above that 3CMC, mm-hmm. then yeah, I think it probably is Luris. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about most powerful new commander. This is the easiest category. I think we're both going to say the <laughs> same thing. Yeah, it's just too obvious, right? It, how about most boring new commander? Most powerful and boring. Kinnan. Kinnan. Yeah, Kinnan the Simic Wonder I would boy. say Nathroy is a close second because, again, bringing back up to 10 power of creatures yeah. is really powerful if you're do, abusing them by putting bringing zero zeros back into play i don't think it's a close second i just think it's second right i don't think yeah. i don't think there's an argument to be made that it's not as that it is as powerful as kinnon but because we've seen like what are the most powerful commanders from the last few sets urza urza uh, golos yep like they are these ones that like have an activated ability thrasios uh, activated ability like when are they going to stop making some activated ability that you can just do as many times as you want like that soon please like i don't think Give when it to red and when white. designing commanders, <laughs> they should probably ask the question, hey, if you get infinite mana, what happens with this? Do you yeah, win? Do you right. immediately win? Because there's so many ways to do so. Now. Maybe let's put something on there that makes that harder then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Favorite overall new commander. Yeah. This is definitely going to be different for us. I, hmm. This one's tough. I think I'm going to like Winota, Joiner of Forces oh. the most because I just like being able to, I love the idea of red and white looking at the top 30 cards of your library. When you said that, I was like, 30 cards? Whoa, that's a lot. I mean, that's if you're attacking with come five non-humans. Yeah, you know, you yeah. never know. Uh, that, I like that. I think I think Obosh is the one I'm the most excited about. I think I want to build like a Bernie burn deal damage to everybody. Deal make, the burn, Josh, make, very make, timely. Make for fast games deck. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I think that's my personal favorite, but there's a lot of cool stuff. I like Zerta quite a bit. Obosh would be a very good alter as Bernie Sanders. So you could feel the burn. <laughs> All grumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, ah, I'm at odds with the world. <laughs> All right, to the listeners, what is your new, uh, sorry, your favorite new legendary creature from Aquaria Lair of Behemoths? Are there any cool interactions or combos you see that maybe we missed? And uh, also, what do you think about the companions? Mm-hmm. Are there any that you're going to take on the challenge and actually try to play as a companion? Are yeah, there I any really, that I you're going to try to play as a companion? Uh, you know, now that we talked about that fox, I think I might try and do that one. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm going to try and build a Brea Artifacts deck that is all about activated abilities. Um, I've been looking to retool that deck for a bit since I made it for game night, so this seems like a really fun opportunity to do so. Very, very cool. All right. If you want to pick up any of these new cards, maybe you just want to get a booster box of yeah. Aquaria Layer of Behemoths and see what you get out of it. I like that, which is like, it gives you a good excuse to open this the booster box. This is a fun box. one, too, because then, yeah. there's all sorts of different cards and frames and stuff that yeah. you can get this time around. So you're going to want to order that stuff at cardkingdom.com slash command zone. If you use that affiliate link, when you order the stuff you're going to order anyway, which is magic cards, you really are just as gravy thrown in, additional value. You're supporting our content. You're helping to keep us going. You're helping this podcast, game nights, all of everything that we do. And hey, you know, if you're going to play a companion, you better put it in a different colored sleeve because mm. you don't no, want well, unless you have a of ways to shuffle it back into your deck. Well, yeah, because you're going to cast it in my die. Yeah, let's just hope you can't shuffle it back into your deck. If you do, then you might need to buy more. But of you need a 101st yeah, sleeve. Yeah, you're going to need a 101st <laughs> sleeve. So why not buy an extra? I always have, like, I like to sleeve a lot of the stuff in the same colors. And having extras around is always nice. By the way, uh, the Eclipse sleeves often will come with an extra two or three sleeves. Yep. So it's that's, perfect. That's unofficial, but very often happens. Very often happens, yeah. So again, Ultra Pro has been a great sponsor of the show for a long time. They make the best stuff to protect your cards, and you're going to have more cards to protect now more than ever yeah for sure you don't want that stuff getting dinged up and banged up so 101 dalmatians or cards you decide (laughs) commander is changing with this set all right no end step once again because we have one more set review to go we're going to be talking about 
all the cards from a Coria Layer of Behemoths that are not legendary creatures can't be your commanders. So there's a ton to go through still. Make sure you've subscribed to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you know when that stuff comes out. And All boy, the new ultimatums. Can't wait yeah, to talk about them. There's a lot to talk about still, so you're not going to want to miss it. All right. Our editing, graphics, and logistics team here at the Command Zone is Craig Blanchett, Ashlyn Rose, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Alfred Estaca, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, and Sam Waldo. And big big thanks to the whole team. These episodes, not only are we doing a lot of videos, they're long videos. This is a couple hours long. Yeah. There's been a number of them. Usually we mention we... H- probably 100 cards in here, too, that they have to pull up and show on screen. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of hard work yeah. from our team. So please give them some kudos in the comments section or on Twitter and whatnot. Absolutely. And, of course, big thanks to Jeffrey Palmer, as always, doing the living card animations behind us here on set, as well as starting and ending the show and on game nights. Big thanks. You can find him at Living Cards MTG on Twitter. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com. Or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>